Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the NWL, welcome to the Constellation Final, welcome to Infi vs. Law Lion in a best of seven. It's gonna be so awesome, my name is Neo, welcome to Back to Warcraft, finally back here with the best competition this entire spring. Nice Game TV provides us with this awesome tournament, it's called the King of Kings for a reason, and it's about to end. Not today, but tomorrow. Constellation Final today, you, uh... Lolite versus Infi and the losers going home with a bronze medal and still with $1,250. The winner of today's game has $2,500 guaranteed and the chance to win even more tomorrow in a game against Yumiko. Best of seven as well. And then the winner is not only getting the trophy, not only getting the gold medal, but also $4,200. It's one of the biggest tournaments that we have here in 2016. I'm not alone today. I have a co-caster, and since we have a human player, it's one of the best co-casters that I can imagine. Vice World Champion of WCA 2016. My beloved friend, it's of course Mark Yors Furster. I'm calling him right now to discuss, of course, what we're about to see here. Lolite will be a little late, as I heard, and Mr. Furster is here. Welcome. Hello, my friend. How have you been? How are you today? My day is so awesome. I got a little echo from you. so. Oh there's... yeah, I'm gonna turn it down and... Right. My Fixed. day is so fucking awesome. I have no idea. This is like um, one of the best mornings that I can imagine, basically. Everything is going so well, and I think uh, starting the cast here with you will things make uh, a lot better. Will make things a lot better. Awesome. That's just good news. Uh, did you tell the guys already that we are in the game? We're just waiting for the light. He will be a few minutes late. And yeah, we are set in stone, we are waiting for that game, and we are hyped for Human Against Night. Of course, this is also one of our favorite matchups, so to say, and we have, like, casted a few Human Against Night that have been, like, absolutely crazy. Just starting with Rudin against Hawk, WCA last year qualifier, and a few more. It's like, it has been always a fun ride, and I think this might be one of the most interesting matchups Warcraft has to offer. Indeed. Speaking of Rudin versus Hawk, that match took place on Echo Isles, and guess what is the first match of today? Echo Isles. That it is. And we have the second player now joining. Solo Light is also there. We'll probably take a few seconds. They will also do the player introductions on the Korean stream. And then we're going to head into that one. But I will put a straw pull down if we don't have that yet. I think to, we uh... have one at Reddit. Um, ah, okay. So, let so me let's share take that a look one. at this. Some, play, uh, some, some people might have voted already. Yeah, let's take a look at this because I really want to know what people think. Like, who is going to make it out of this? Okay, I'm gonna share it in the chat. We have uh, five votes already. It's basically 50 50. Um, but, chat, here's the straw poll. So, raise your voice and let us know who are you rooting for and who you think is gonna win. We have, of course, the voting system at readmore.de. There, people say 70% uh, of the people say that Law Light is gonna do it. 28% um, are rooting for Infi. And, of course, we all remember WCA. This is where uh, the two players collided. Uh, not the last time, but where it was a best of three and not only a best of one. And the big story of WCA, apart from your Cinderella story, of course, was Yumiko, the Chinese human slayer. Yo, and Lolayet's percentage is rising like crazy at the moment. 25 votes going for his account. So 66% already of the people think that he will definitely take this series to his account and will advance to the grand final here. And yeah, Lolayet has been the human slayer all over the place. But on the other hand, I have heard that Infi is the best human against Night of nowadays from different sources. It seems like Infi is also practicing a shitload of games, is getting ready for game uh, for this, um, what is it called, Golden Championship Series? Yes, indeed. And yeah, he is preparing against Night of like crazy, because for him and also for TH on WCA 2015 Battleground, it must have felt like, dude, we are doing something so wrong. Lolite is just beating us completely without leaving any doubt. <laughs> And it seems like they are so eager to find out what's the solution to the warden. And as it seems, Infi is the one like gathering so much information and actually figuring something out. So I'm kind of hyped for this game and I really want to see what's going on here. Indeed. As you speak of Golden Championship Series, 
Infi is the reigning and defending Golden Championship uh, Series player. La Light, of course, bronze medal at WCA. The stakes cannot be a lot higher than we have it here today. And it is a best of seven. This will not come down to one big item drop, one tomb of experience, one lucky creep jack or whatever. This is definitely determining who is the better player of the two in this specific matchup. And uh, I'm really, really excited about this here today. Yeah, also about the final tomorrow, we will head into that one as well with a best of seven coming up. We have a human player already waiting there, Yumiko. And yeah, even if it's a human mirror, I, I will be crazy hyped about human mirror in the grand final, of course. You, I know, you're probably looking for it and root for your boy Lolaya <laughs> to make it out of here and then face Yumiko again. On the other hand, we have to say, or at least I have to say, like, uh, my personal favorite is still Yumiko because he's such a fun guy. He's, like, easy to talk to. He's, like... In general, is such a nice helping person in that tournament environment, and he was helping us like crazy. And he had respect for Euro for the European scene even before we were like performing really good. Like Rich was performing good in his group, I was performing well. So even before that all happened, in, um, Yumiko already was like, oh, "Hey, let's go, let's talk some, let's have some fun, We're, like chit chatting and stuff." On the other hand, the others, so to say, like 120 TH and Infi, even with Fly, Fly was a little bit off the side. But they have this little kind of group going on and they wanted to keep all the information to themselves. And they pretty much had no respect for the Europeans, but that changed throughout WCA. Thanks. So kind of funny to see, like, at least the guy that I really uh, think he's one of the coolest players we have around Yumiko is waiting in the final already. Indeed, we see that here in the grid of the beautiful Liquipedia coverage of the NWL King of Kings season number one it's about nine thousand dollars we have the fourth place already that is going to focus 420 bucks to his side the loser of today will end up with a bronze medal and uh, 1250 dollars but let's take a look at the grid infi beat believe three to two in the first stage of this tournament then he lost to moon zero to three there was a surprise, maybe Infi didn't play his best, but maybe it is an indicator that he is not as strong versus Night Elf as you and some others may think. But I saw some games and I think this was not the most serious uh, play of Infi that we have seen of all time. He dropped down to the loser bracket, beat Belief again 3-0, advanced against Shishi 3-1, beat Fly 3-1. That was pretty, uh, pretty intense. And of course, the game against Focus 3 to 1 as well. Lolaid on the other side made a long, long way through the winner bracket. He started off with a 3 0 against Romantic. Obviously, his best matchup, one of his best matchups versus Human. Then 3 0 versus Shishi in an amazing series. He beat Moon 3 to 1, so his Knight of Mirror got a lot better. He was defeated by Yumiko 3 to 2. In, yeah, also an amazing series. This tournament provides so much, and now he faces Infi and yours. We're in game. Yes, we're in game. We are gonna head into Echo Isles. It will be the first game of today. We're gonna head into a best of seven. So get your snacks ready, get your popcorn, get everything that you need to stay here with us and witness what we are about to see here. First of all, let's introduce the players on the left hand side of Echo Isles. We're gonna have Lolayed, the South Korean. Wonderkin, the best Knight of player that we probably have around, at least for this tournament, proving himself all over again. And also last year, defeating all the Chinese human players. Definitely for me, the favorite in this series. But on the other hand, we have the legend itself, one of the best human players that ever touched the game. It will be Infi spawning in the orange color on the right hand side here of Echo Isles. And the first heroes will be a Mountain King against the Warden. And this is already promising quite an entertaining match. This is indeed the case. The Warden is the signature hero of Law Light. We all know that no one controls this hero better than Law Light does. He sometimes plays with two hands on his keyboard just to uh, provide the best micro that he can get out of the Warden. With Fan of Knives, with Blinks, with uh, Shadow Strikes early on. And no one plays it like he does. But Infi on the other side, his micro might not be the best in the entire Warcraft scene. He's not uh, known for shiny situations, for uh, moves that can do or make it into highlight videos. He is known for his uh, strategical choices, for his decision making. And that is what made him so strong in the past uh, three years, I guess. 
Yeah, it's really like two kind of rival playstyles go at each other. We have this kind of shiny, crazy micro stuff coming out of a warden and just providing so much entertainment by killing just a huge bunch of units in one hit with one spell. Now we're going to have the priest, and in case you're wondering why is he not using the dispel on the sh uh, lightning shield, it's not going to work because it's casted by the creeps and for some reason you cannot dispel it. Shadow Priest uses some healing here. He uses the first Shadow Strike on that one as well. We're gonna have that Lightning Shield pulled out in the right moment so he's not taking any experience from himself. And as I said that one, the Archer was about to kill that one. We see that the Footman stole one of the creeps. Well done there by Infi already. The Archer is probably dying to the creeps in the very last second, attacking the Warden, getting that damage from the creeps, pulling the aggro away. Archer stays alive, but the footman can easily kill that one. Now he goes for that. He saw that he can kill it, kills it. Level 2 for the warden. Nonetheless, parry up of vitality will the item be. And on the Mountain King, we're going to see a Ring of Protection plus 3. One of the worst items that you can possibly find there for a Mountain King. But in the end, he gets 2.5 in terms of level because he stole something. He killed uh, the archer. And he just got a little bit more out of this, I guess. This is a fucking horrible early game for the Lion, man. Two creeps have been stolen by that footman. And the archer died, so what a nice leveling for Infi. What a nice start for Infi. And yeah, level 3 Mountain King will do so much damage towards the Warden, who wants to harass, who wants to get uh, the pickups here and there. He gets the footman here, but his leveling is delayed for quite some time. His tech, his tech is starting, and there is a Wisp nearby at the natural expansion to get ready for a counter expansion, because Infi is gathering his troops, he's calling the Militia, he has the Shadow Priest, and he's going for his natural expansion, as you always do on Echo Isles. Speaking of Echo Isles, Mr. Yoss, there's one thing that is super important, do you know what it is? Dude, I've heard this guy, uh, Neostradamus, talking about it. Maybe you can enlighten me a little bit here. Indeed. Echo Isles is pretty special because there's only one shop on this map, and especially if you uh, work against Fan of Knives, heal scrolls are super important. If you face Shadow Strike, then the invul potions are important. That goes vice versa for human and for Night Elf. So shop control on Echo Isles, very important. Very important indeed, and we see that he sold the Town Paul. He's level 3, the Warden is creeping there, he needs to pull the Town Paul. He tries to dodge the spell with a blink, not on top of his game. Lacks a little bit there of ping or whatever it is. It's also the vision at night that is causing you some trouble. And the Berserker is paying the price as well. So every single unit from the light on the field is dead and gone. No hero, no more units. Nothing and this game turns out to be a nightmare even though that the expansion for the human player is not constructed yet But we are opening this best of seven with a game that could not be any worse for the light It's just a slaughter. It's carnage what happens here to the light. We all remember Infi versus Fly at WCG Finals, I guess it was 2009, where Fly beat Infi on this exact map in 4 minutes 20 seconds. I think this is kind of like the same horrible opening um, to a match. I mean, level 4 Mountain King is so close by. He puts up pressure with more mercenaries. Laliad has the Huntress Hall down, so he can buy some units. He gets Ultra Vision most likely, saving that Wisp here. But what can he do? He can do nothing against the expansion. He's not even close of being level 3 with that, uh, with that Warden. And that's what you need. High level Warden versus the economy of human players. I don't know how he's supposed to come back. I don't see it either. We're gonna see a few Huntresses storming out, but there's still one for uh, one Trapper down at the expansion, trapping every single Huntress that comes out and doing somewhat of a damage. We have one Huntress in the expansion of the human player, trying to force a few militias as well as a few kills on all these units. Staff of Teleportation finally being used here by the Mountain King. And I really liked how he was not spending any balls to the Wisp, like wasting his mana pool, because the mana pool on the Mountain King is kind of small, with a panda coming out as a second hero now, he tries to stabilize, but speaking of stabilizing, he loses two of his Huntresses, panda completely exposed, probably not going for a surround, he still got one more bolt that he can spend, Warden coming to that party, still Town Portal available, but she died and she's still not level 3, what do you really want to do with a level 2 Warden, not even full mana on her? And he's just putting so much pressure on the Knight of Player, not by attacking his main base any longer, but by just creating that expansion, getting the second gold mine going. The economy is completely untouched. We have the lumber mill going up in the main base. He just needs a little bit more lumber to take to tier 2, and then he will be in a splendid position. On the other side, we see that the Engine of War tries to go to the left side here on Echo Eyes and tries to open up the turtle creep spot that he wants to engage and wants to gather some more experience from. 
Two Ancient of Lore is coming as well as the shop, and yeah, it looks really, really bad for the Knight of Player. Indeed, I think he tries to go for some sneaky creeping here that Infi does not expect, but at the same time, this is scouted already by the Footmans, nicely done by Infi. He has two Shadow Priests, he can dispel so much, he can heal so much. On the other side, we see two Ancients of Lore being constructed, no tier 3 tech yet. La Light was out of gold for such a long time, no shop for him. The Mountain King is leveling and leveling and leveling, and here comes the army, Footman and Shadow Priest, and now the creeps attack the Engine of War, the Footman scouts it again, and I don't think this is gonna work for Lolliot here, man, he's calling some more mercenaries, no he's not. The Panda has like zero experience, the Warden still not level 3, creeping two heroes at the same time is of course harder than creeping one, so Infi is dominating this game. Yeah, absolutely. He's on top of everything. He knows whenever there's some creeping going on. He keeps taps of the Ancient of War. That's so cool to see. We have another bash on the Warden. Another one on top of that. Do we have a bolt? No more bolt. There actually is a bolt. He just blinked there. So the next bolt would have been the dead of the Warden. Yet again, he bolts the Huntress. Can he kill that one in time? Nope, that one escapes. But in the meantime, just take account into account what do we have here as an overall situation. We're going to have... Dryads on the field. Dryads who can pretty much do, can pretty much kill the entire human army here right now if he doesn't have defense, and I don't think he got that. Arcane Tower is only upgraded now. We don't have any guard towers, so it seems like Lolite's choice right now might be to go into a nice Dryad count here and then try to get like as much done as you possibly can by sniping footmen, sniping mercenaries. But on the other hand, we are never gonna have a Mountain King level four and a half after finishing that camp with a healing scroll. And that Invo Potion equipped, so he is damn strong, is probably not going to die. He constructs a nice wall off there at the expansion so that he cannot dive into the workers all that easy. Scouts the expansion with another illusion, and yeah, as I said it, he keeps tabs of everything. He just checks on everything that's about to happen, and you said he's not famous for the shiny play. But he's executing that strategy really, really well. Indeed, that it is. Level 3 for the Warden, finally. And level 2 for the Pendulum Brewmaster. So Lolite is stabilizing at least a bit. He's still fighting uphill, but we remember the game at WCA where Infi was dominating so much. And it looked like, why is Lolite staying in this game? He has no chance. But then. He won a fight here at the Murloc spot, where Infi was creepjacking him, and that turned the entire game around. Lalaya turned everything with uh, one of the best micro I've ever seen in my life. That was Lan, so that might be an entire different story, but there's still an opportunity for this guy to come back. Never write Lalaya off, but look at the inventory of the Mountain King. The big invul as well, on top of the small invul here. The Warden is trying to find some victims, but so far that's not gonna work and he's killing the turtle the item is the pendant of energy he definitely gets the right items as well as the important levels that he will need level three panda just right around the corner level three warden already we still have the footman and i like how he's not committing with these units he's he's not like you know what i'm gonna take my mountain king and my units and gonna run into your bane base and make something happen he's not forcing the issue he keeps these units alive usually you see human players dive in try to make something happen and pay the price by losing so many units there so far he just goes in with the mountain king he's still got the stuff of teleportation that he can use whenever he feels like that he needs to get Get out of that main base and now we're gonna see Lolaid coming to that expansion tries to kill a few of these units mountain king steps in immediately denies the experience here with the self kill of his unit and now we're gonna have the few towers up like one arcane tower one guard tower seems to be enough so that this expansion becomes untouchable and for some reason he did not level up the panda to level three yet and he's somewhat out of position needs to be careful but since there's no oh actually there is defense so he can definitely take on this army Level 3 Bolt already available for the Mountain King, the Bash hits the Panda, we're gonna have the beautiful combination of the Drunken Haze, Breath of Fire, he just levels up in time, another Shadow Strike on the Mountain King, he got two Invo Potions, pops, one, the, uh, pops the small one right now, no more Bolt available at this point, but the big one is also on cooldown, so he needs to be a little bit careful, the workers are all exposed, If there's actually a lot of mana left on the Panda, he can burn down all these workers if he wants to with another combination. He's not pulling them away, he's not healing them up. And it seems like Lolaid sees that opportunity, blows up a huge chunk of these workers, but the Mountain King got a big mana potion. There it is, the bolt on the Warden. He knew that there's a Staff of Preservation on the Warden waiting to step out the Panda, and he couldn't use that one if he's like 
stunned himself. The Mountain King now in all sorts of trouble. Needs to be careful. Another bolt. He steps out. The panda in the right moment levels up and stays alive. Kills the Mountain King as a return kill. And is this the same story again? Is he turning the game around? Are you kidding me? Law Liot, man. I told you, never write him out of the game. Never um, expect him to lose if he's down. There's always a chance for him to come back. And once again, this warden with surviving with like 20 HP. The Mountain King is dead. I don't really know why that happened. I mean, that wasn't really necessary. I feel Infi was committing to this a little too much on top of things. He, Lolite is backing things with an expansion of his own. On the other side, we see the tier 3 for Infi. Triple Griffin Aviary with Mass Hawks. So this was the time to shine for Lolite. He committed heavily to the Dryad, which is a very, very good tier 2 unit. Infi on the other side, he skipped tier 2 completely, going into Mass Air and tier 3 now. So this was his timing to do something good. He did that, but uh, was it enough? That's the question we have to answer. Yeah, I think the biggest problem was that he lost the Mountain King with the big Invo Potion equipped cooldown should have worn off and I think he could have used that one. We're gonna see a little bit of a Gark Harris here with uh, Hawks now in the main base trying to snipe the Wisp there, trying to lower the Lumber, uh, lumber uh, whatever you want to call Lumber production or Lumber harvesting. And yeah, so far he's not really that successful with all of that. Needs to step out again. And this gave so much experience to the Knight of Heroes. Look at this ward and goes up to level 4. And only with the level up she was able to stay alive. And this was so crazy. If he didn't kill like any of the units in the meantime while the warden was focused, she would have flat out died there. And yeah, just with the level up, staying alive, keeping keep himself into the game. And now with that expansion coming into play for him, we're going to be on equal economical conditions for both of the players. And this will be so, so tough now for Infi. He will try to make air work, but usually against the panda and the warden, I don't see it work that all that much. It's indeed super hard. We have the Breath of Fire area of effect. We have the Fan of Knives area of effect. So uh, it's not going to be the... Ha and of course we have the right clicks from the Dryad. We have the right clicks from uh, the Warden with that Orb of Venom. But how much can Infi do here? With It's not that many Hawks just yet. The Harass is kind of countable. But so far he killed three Wisps if he gets that. No, two Wisps it is. And he cripples him at least a bit. He's going for the gamble here. Tomb of Experience would be awesome. And it is a Tomb of Experience for, yeah, the Paladin most likely. Because on level 1, he's so weak. And then when he gets uh, Divine Shield, he becomes a lot stronger. Spamming the ho Holy Light left, right and center. Yeah, and it's kind of smart to cripple the economy and trying to snipe all the wisp. Because on this map, we don't have a laboratory. So you cannot just simply solve this by getting a shredder. You will probably need to hide all of your wisp all over the map. And since the flying units can always have a superior vision on, on that stuff, they will probably figure out where your wisp are. So far, he's doing a good job. Two of them are hidden. Level 4 for the panda by killing one of the hawks above the forest. We're going to have the threat of the triple hero, but since the paladin and the panda are not, uh, the paladin and the blood mage are not that high leveled, it's not super crazy, but banish and level three bolt, we have all seen it once and it's pretty damn effective against everything there is. We're going to have triple ancient of wind coming out here for the knight of player. He's heavily committing to anti-air units. He wants to outmass him. Of course, uh, dragon hawks are kind of good against air, but only if you can shackle all of them. If you go into three Ancients of Wind's hippos, I don't think you can catch up with that production. I mean, of course, Infi has three Griffin aviaries as well, but uh, still, the, the hippos are uh, way faster to produce and way cheaper. Yeah, and the, the biggest problem is definitely just the threat of a third hero for the native player. You will just add a Dark Ranger as a third hero and silence a bunch yeah. of the Hawks. So that you will always have the advantage. And on the ground, you also have a few Dryads going at the Hawks. And in the meantime, the Breath of Fire and the Fan of Knife, if he ever rescales, will be devastating towards the Hawks. You can see that he's trying to establish a nice bank here so that he can transition into 100 supply at some point. But so far, he's just able to gather like 2k gold. Or he's going into the direction of 2k gold, getting the third attack upgrade. Also having a little bit of lumber problems here. Mountain King running over the map with the biggest balls of his life. The Cojones bringing that fight to the Knight of Flare with just one hero. That can be easily sniped if there might be... He could also go for a Keeper probably to just prevent that yeah. and kill the hero or uh, anything. But of course this might be a commitment that you don't want to face. Yeah, there's still a staff. But yeah, there is no disable for the Night Elf here at the moment. So uh, the Mountain King should feel pretty damn safe. Warden is not close by. 
So, Infi found the second Tome of Experience. The Paladin is level 2 and the third, the Blood Mage is level 2. He has two, no, one Staff, two um, Scrolls, one Invo Potion here. So the inventory for Infi is absolutely great. The upgrade is coming as you mentioned it, and Knights are coming as well. Check so the Ancient of Wind, please. What? Yes. Why? I don't I don't get it at all. Why he's go why he's transitioning into mass fairy dragons might be the throw of his life, but on the other hand, fairy dragons cannot be shackled and they have this phase shift kind of ability. True. You cannot bolt banish them and can snipe them one by one. That's impossible. On the other hand, wow. they do piercing damage against the light armor of the hawks. That might work, but on the other hand, they have light armor themselves. They are not really well upgraded and we have 3 zero hawks going at it with like a lot of more HP, but probably has faced that one he wouldn't go into that kind of play if he's never played that before, I guess. No, not on a, on a um, so important day like this when it's about one of the biggest tournaments that we have the entire spring. So we have an anti-magic potion, so he won't be able to get bolted in the early stages. We have two staffs on him, also a heal scroll, also an invo potion. Here comes Infi, wants to do some damage. How much gold is left in the main base? It's 2,800, 2,900. Uh, so that's okay, that's gonna last for a while. Will Infi scout? Yeah, he scouts them immediately. And if he keeps the numbers low of the Fury Dragons, I don't think this tactic can work. But will he commit to a fight against bears and those two strong heroes? I don't think so. He definitely needs to add like two workshops or three workshops and either get like a bunch of tanks with that rocket upgrade, because it's unlimited. You can shoot like at whatever count of uh, air units you will have for the Night Elf, they will just shoot at everything. So siege tanks with that air upgrade will be great against this kind of army. On top of that, you could also go for gyrocopters, but they suffer quite some damage from the Breath of Fire. So usually what I would tend to go for, yeah, like a few tanks with that rocket upgrade. Not sure if he's really going for that. One of the knight is stuck inside the main base, tries to free that one, is not setting up any kind of production there. He upgrades the armor upgrade now for his hawks. He's still on 78 supply, not breaking into high upkeep. Warden tries to keep tabs of the units, and we have that bunch of fairy dragons going in but you can see how easily the hawks can snipe the fairy dragons like with one volley almost killing one face shifting away keeping him alive for now i'm not really so sure if this is the best unit composition i've ever seen against the mass air from a human player yeah i think in theory it can work but you need extraordinary micro for that is the ping sufficient we'll see about that infi is creeping the gi uh, the giant sea turtle on his side so far he was pretty damn lucky with his item drops and everything so let's see. But there's also one factor we haven't mentioned yet, and that is the um, the gold count of the expansion. Infi's expansion was there a lot earlier, and you see it, the difference is 5,000 gold. The longer the game goes, the better it's gonna be for Law Light. If there's a situation where both main gold mines are down here, has to fight, by the way, the big air fight in the upper left. So far, it looks like the Fury Dragons are prevailing. And uh, 72 food versus 76, but for how long is the question? I think Your he's Fury Dragons are owning Hawks. Yeah. Easy so far. The phase shift is doing so good at the moment, but everything is red. Infi is not focusing right here, as it seems. The uh, problem no. is that you cannot efficiently focus that one. I, I think he also uses the phase shift manually sometimes to dodge the focus, and then like your units are idling, but now he also loses a bunch of units. So in the end, it was a trade that is probably 50-50, but since the Hawks are like more expensive than the than the Fairy Dragons, it's definitely the better trade-off for the Knight of Player, and he gathers so much experience. I think that was solo XP for the Warden all along, because she was the only hero around, yeah. and she was pretty close by, and the Panda is still level 4. So now we're going to have a level 5 Warden for the Knight of as well. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, what I wanted to say is, um, if... Infi's two gold mines are down, and that's only a matter of time. La Light will have the huge advantage, and he's hunting him down again with the Fury Dragons. Only four hawks remaining. They are a little faster, though, so they will escape. The question is for how long. In the meantime, Infi is planning an attack to the expansion. You know, that attack is not doing all that much, I guess. Only a bunch of hawks lined up with the triple hero, and one knight with three attack upgrades snipes another wisp, kills that one. It's a third wisp here, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, now setting up a few towers, but no, it's actually just one tower, probably to scout out how much army is out on the field here for the Night Elf and to figure out what kind of army composition that he wants to head into. Have another second guard tower going up at the bottom, also getting that one. <clears throat> and as it seems, 
Envy is kind of struggling. I'm really surprised that he's not adding workshops for just like the sole purpose of getting like a few of these tanks against the against the fairy dragon. So just the hawk, uh, just even some of the um, gyrocopters. So far, it's not doing anything. And yeah, the beautiful face shifts now. The fight breaks out. Breath of Fire hits all the hawks. There are a few heal scrolls. First one is used. Mountain King tries to kill the warden. But with that anti-magic potion equipped, there's no chance that he can bolt that one for quite a long time. Level 6 for the Mountain King now. Pops the Avatar. It's now super strong. It's going at the bears. But the air fight seems to be better for the Knight of player. He tries to win that one so damn hard. The Siphon Mana is real on the heroes. Siphoning the mana from the warden. She's down to zero mana. The panda still got 270 mana to spend. Breath of Fire combination hitting that... The blood mage and he needs to tumble out in the very last second. Yeah, he's trying to get that bear, but he doesn't get it. 66 food for the night elf. We have 73 for Infi. 200 gold remaining in the main gold mines. And now is the time for Laliat to shine. We see the avatar, um, so he is kind of safe from Shadow Strike and he is kind of safe from Breath of Fire, but yeah, that's about it. Some damage boost, some armor boost. He's a good tank with that, but it's not a game breaking. Um, ultimate like the avatar of vengeance is or like the split from the panda is those will become a lot more uh, dangerous for infi once lalayet gets into that level mangled mind for lalayet is down as well obviously a little more shopping here a little more mana regeneration the blood mage did a fairly good job i think in this fight uh, he, he barely killed anything just look at the levels the experience on the warden and the panda barely rising throughout the entire fight and i think he lost way too much on the other hand, we also have the heal scrolls that have been used to a good per uh, to a good use there in that fight, and he needs to get them every single time if he's not willing to lose that game. Because the the healing scrolls are the only tool that keeps the units alive, and if you lose these hawks against the fairy dragons, you are in so much trouble. And also the panda with the 450 mana. Not sure why he's not retraining on the warden. Of course, he will not be able to use so many fan of knives because he will be siphoned at some point. But in the end, it's definitely worth it. Now he's even bringing the militias in because the main gold mines are drained. And we're going to take that really, really important and maybe all deciding fight here at the expansion. Lots of upgrades on all the units. 3-1 on all of the Night Elf units. 3-0 and 3-3 on the human units. Scroll protection being used for Infi. Where is this? But I don't see it yet. Little mistake here. Breath of Fire into the Passants. I don't think that's the right choice here. Level up for the Paladin. So Infi is doing great here. One uh, Fury Dragon is dying after another. The Dryads, of course, cannot take apart with the Knights here. A level, uh, Breath of Fire again. But I think Infi is prevailing after all the numbers of Laliad are dwindling and the magic potion on the warden but what's he gonna do he, he can use a lot of mana still where is the shadow strike where is the fan of knights we don't see any of it so far and the air of Laliad is almost gone yeah the air army is completely destroyed fairy dragons not paying off at all panda is now the target of choice the warden needs to come back and step that one out there he goes back to the main base, healing up the warden at one of the healing fountains. But the Mountain King so damn strong. Level 6 years, another bolt finishes the bear. We have these 3-3 three, three upgraded hawks that killed everything. I think the upgrades together with the protection scroll played such a huge role in that fight. And in the end, it was also the control of the triple hero that kept everything alive with the heal scrolls, with the shift mana on the heroes keeping so much attention to the warden and the panda so that he had to micro them so efficiently to get out of the range of the siphon mana to kill something and now the expansion is falling the triple upgraded units do so much damage it's crazy yeah, and they tank so much you mentioned with the scroll of protection together nine armor points preventing from i don't know 40 percent of damage whatsoever and the fury dragons only one upgrade super squishy and of course uh, the hp are better for dragon hawks as well so in the end might have been the better choice we have level six here we we have double level 4 on the 2nd and 3rd tier and both are pretty damn close to level 5 so the heroes of Infi are only gonna get better. His main gold mine, uh, his expansion gold mine is still working for him. 1600, La Liot has zero income anymore and of course Infi known for infinite towers setting them up securing the spot for himself. Yeah absolutely he's not slipping uh, letting this game slip away through some i don't know crazy fights crazy miss micro losing a hero or something he sets up the second expo at the natural here of the knight of player because his expansion will be drained in a few seconds as well we have a breath of fire hitting all the units the sif and mana standing strong against the panda now the focus is on that blood mage he banishes himself gets healed up again uses sif and mana on the warden there's another shadow strike almost finishing that one up staff of preservation in the very last second and the first game ends with a huge blast and what a crazy game to start this best of seven with 
it's it's just amazing to see that and yeah i'm kind of hyped to what we're gonna see on the next game echo isles always so promising especially in this matchup this was a very very unique game triple hero versus uh, night elf hawk did it before in a game on Terina stand he played griffins not dragon hawks but it absolutely worked for him as well maybe that is the answer maybe that's the answer that uh, the human players were looking for but of course what a great early game this was for Infi. Um, props to the Light to even come back as far as he did. Because uh, with fighting a level 4 Mountain King with a level 2 Warden is super duper hard. But Infi, once again, great, uh, great decisions. And I think the timing attacking the expansion was also like the best he could pick. Yeah, with the drides, he needed to make something happen. And for a long time, Infi was super patient, not overextending, not losing his units. But then at some point, he thought like, you know what? I'm so far ahead, I can just take this fight. Then losing his level 5 uh, Mountain King. Then he needs to buy so much time because he's buying him back at the tavern. And this is costing you so many resources to get a level 5 hero back from the tavern. So he needed to make something happen. In the end, I'm not sure if I like that kind of hawk play. I think there's still like a lot of stuff that can counter this like more efficiently than we have seen it. Of course, he didn't want to go into the fairy dragons, uh, into the normal uh, hippogriffs, because he felt the risk of everything being unshackled. And for some reason, he also felt like, you know what? If I get the dark rangers, she will be sniped with holy light, banished, and level three bolt. I don't think that I can keep her alive, and this might be the cause of the game forcing Loliath into this weird position where he had to go with the fairy dragons in order to stay alive and keep up with that air army and maybe this was like indestructible from Infi like the triple upgrades protection scroll heal scroll but yeah. we also haven't seen Loliath buying any scrolls and as you know shop control is important we've seen it yet again <laughs> indeed um, especially with the warden you have it kind of easy to get all those uh items you desire of course he always had to reproduce a lot of units because he lost so much so maybe it wasn't in his budget um to go for it but yeah especially in the first fight when things were pretty even i guess both were at uh 80 80 infi had two heal scrolls and in the end i guess uh, that won him the fight and that just snowballed for him in the end so yeah you, you could really see like after the fight lolai drops down to 60 and well, you see Infi barely losing anything, still yeah. staying in 77, keeping everything alive, town portaling out, healing up, getting new scrolls. This was the crucial one. If you buy the scrolls at this point, he might not attack you for additional like two to three minutes to get like at least one scroll going for him because he cannot afford to fight against you without any scrolls. So, But also we saw Loliath like being late for the game, probably rushing to his computer, setting everything up and yeah, not being in the perfect spot. You, you never know. I, I don't try to make something up, but we know that he he uh, told us that he will be late and this is probably due because he kind of rushed to his computer and maybe this is like the entire first game. Because in the end of the first game, he was playing much better than in the start. True. Uh, definitely true. And uh, maybe he's warmed up now. Maybe we'll see the real La Liot on map number two. Map number two is Secret Valley. And uh, I'm the overlays and then we're going in game it, it is ancient isles by the way oh ancient isles i'm sorry sorry gotta change the colors as they always do on netties changing everything that's true play i like to change the colors every time uh, for some reason they don't have like any preferred colors i know that the dodo Light really likes to play with yellow though so we're gonna stick to the yellow so i would ready to introduce the players do so mr yours we are live there we go ancient isle it is second map of today we have a lead for the human player Infi taking the first map rather convincingly in the end, but also struggling in the middle of that game. Second game played on Ancient Isles. It is the green human player spawning on the top half here of Ancient Isles. It is Infi again, the Chinese human legend going up against the South Korean Loliath, who is starting to spawn here in the yellow trunks and will probably do his best to at least take this map because this is supposed to be a map that is really, really hard for human and this should make it a little easier for him. Indeed, of course, the human players uh, rely on their expansion plays in every map, basically, against uh, Night Elf. There are some players who make it work without expansions, with rifle play or mass mortar play, but especially the Chinese, they don't do that. They go for the expansion no matter what. Doesn't matter if it's Ancient Isles or Secret Valley or Amazonia, Second uh, Town Hall, 
is a must for them and especially Infi Man. I don't think he ever played a game in his life without a, without an expansion. Yeah, he probably had the same realization that I had, like Rifleman suck, which is a good one to have. <clears throat> we have some gods of human still making that one work. Big shout outs to Imperios, the god of gods, the one and only player besides Hawk that can make Rifleman work and gr probably great again. But for the Chinese guys, I think they figured out that their kind of style is really dependent on that expansion, on setting up a second economy and just relying on the second gold mine, managing the gold really, really well with no upkeep, gold management. It's not the same, like we don't have the crazy macro that you usually have in StarCraft, but Warcraft also got his own rules with paying taxes, going over 50 supply and stuff. So money management plays a huge role at this point, at this stage of the game where the high highest level of the game is being played so this is kind of interesting to see and also keep an eye on that yeah i think a uh, few people do it better than infi we see the first creep spots ogamaji is dead it is the clause of attack for the archmage great item for him it is a clause of attack for the demon hunter even better for the night elf player but he's not picking it up okay now he is kind of Busy microing something here, I guess. Oh, it's the Wisp because Infi is harassing and he's killing a Wisp with a footman. This is never supposed to happen. Yeah, on the other side, he was pulling away the dragon and the creeps at the top mercenary camp to get the priest out. So he was kind of busy doing a little bit of stuff all over the map. Also getting a few more uh, of the Wispy on the main base, probably. One of the Wisp super low HP ba microed back into the gold mine. No stays alive. Footman still being annoying as hell. And the Demon Hunter is forced to go back into the main base. And this is something as a human player that you really like to see. If you know that the first hero is not around to harass you at the expansion, usually this is a big talent, you know. You know, you know, just, okay, I will have like at least one minute where I can creep this super easy without any struggle. And we don't even see Wisp being there to detonate the War Teleman. So we don't see the Demon Hunter there. He just crept the little camp to go up to level 2. And it seems like he's kind of struggling here a little bit with his play. Not everything is on point. Really unusual for Lulite, I want to say. Nothing happened so far, guys. Don't get me wrong. But in the end, he is like misplaying this in order to be there in time. To not get all the stuff that he needs and loses Wisp to Footman. This is something that you rarely see of Lulite. Yeah. On the other side, he got uh, two priests and one berserker now. Tons of damage, especially the dispel against the water mantles will do great and will help the demon hunter level up. At WCA, we saw, I don't think we saw this map, but we saw Secret Valley. And it's also very hard to expand there. And there we saw Lulite going for immolation and that worked so well. But here on... Uh, AI in this very match, he wasn't even close of harassing, so it's an entire different game than back then. He tries to harass with an engine of war. Is that a desperation move already? No, he tries to call some more militias, tries to create multiple threats here because he needs to pull his units back. In the meantime, we're gonna have footmen storming into the main base trying to kill another wisp here, now forcing another moonwell out of him. He wants to construct that one, nonetheless loses one of the footmen's demon hunters still standing strong, trying to do something. Engine of War was cancelled. Wisp is still in the expansion, scouting. They're hanging out to do something, probably just scouting that expo and seeing the movement of the human player. But since Infi had such an easy task to go up to level 3, he even sold the town pole, got the boots of speed, denied the boots of speed for the demon hunter. If he wants to pick that one up, he has to travel to the opposite side of the map to actually get that. So just by stealing that and denying it at the expansion, this was so damn well played by Infi. And so far, he's not letting anything slip. He gets the tower. He is probably starting to tag soon as soon as he can afford it. So far, he struggles to find the amount of lumber that he will need. Pulls another round of militia, not sure. A little bit anxious here. He is aware that the Knight of Player will come to the expansion and try to do something about it. Yeah, he's but the level 2 water elemental. He's Look distracting at with the Demon Hunter now and attacking with the Mercs, but Infi is well aware. Cancelling one tower though, not killing it, so it's still up there. And on the other side, we see an expansion from the light in the upper right of this map. So he needs to buy time. He wants to catch up an economy. I think his tech has started. Yes, it has, halfway through. So he has a tech advantage. He wants to catch up with economy but his demon hunter is fairly low getting some experience here but 55 and he's uh, okay he has the boots now himself so he can run away otherwise this would have been a problem for him definitely but the traits are so good for the human player you know okay i kind of um, i kind of killed so much hp on your demon hunter you, you are forced to go back and heal up <clears throat> excuse me and yeah this gives you another 
another two minutes to get stuff done, to get a shop done, to get some more lumber, to get towers into play. We're gonna have a guard tower and an arcane tower in the expansion as well as a shop being constructed right now. And you can just see in what kind of a good position Infi finds himself. Indeed, but his, uh, lots of footmen of his are pretty damn low, so there is an opportunity for Lolai to take some experience here, but he's going for the Archmage this time. Mana burns everything that the Archmage has to offer. In the meantime, the militia, uh, the militia, the mercenaries are attacking. Now he finds the injured footman. What can he make out of it? There's no shop in the main base, so there's no scroll of regeneration. The Archmage still has to run away. The Demon Hunter is slightly faster, but now he shifts the target again to the footman. He is able to save them in this main base. The right click is not enough. Well micro by Enfi. Well, the Archmage is going into the direction of the expansion for a second now, changing the direction to go to the shop and probably buy a staff of teleportation. Yes, he's doing that, not scouting the expo yet. The towers are not ready in the, uh, ready in the main base, and this is a huge opportunity for the Knight of Player to strike there and do some damage. The footmen are also below HP. I think the defense is... is it ready or just cancelled? I don't think so. I think... I didn't see it. I'm gonna see it as soon as he tries to use it. Archmage now in a healthy spot again, is being attacked, mana burned. Denies that priest with the Demon Hunter. Demon Hunter still level 2.5, not close to level 3 yet, but he tries to kill a few more footmen. So far he's doing so much damage with all of these units, and there we have the defense. So defense is already into play here for the human player. Can he deny the footman or micro him away? That would be so beautiful. Breath of Fire finishes that one off. He die he kills a priest in return, but the Ancient of Lords are going up in the main base. He cannot do all that much against it. He even plays it safe with the expansion. It's going for the Nature's Blessing, not going for the tier 3 tech. We have that aggressive shop in the middle, buys the Clarity Potion for the panel, as well as the Staff of Preservation. Not willing to lose any more units. We're going to have the defense again. And tries to kill one of the archers. Can he step him out in time? Yes, he is even stepping out the archer. Demon Hunter tries to cancel that blacksmith at the expansion. The footmen are being microed to the expo. The ones that were low HP and stored in the main base are now coming back to life, being regenerated. And the other ones are driven away where the berserker and the panda. We have to mention one item here, I guess, and that is the Ring of Regeneration that Infi found at his natural expansion. He was kind of low, thanks to a lot of mana burns and a lot of right clicks from Lolliot, but uh, this item got him back up to, like, the green HP value without any scrolls of regeneration because he was so far away. Um, as you remember, he was in his main base, then circled to the expansion um, or the shop here at La Laia's ex expansion. No healing whatsoever. It was only this item and the natural HP regeneration from the Archmage that kept him alive here. Now, Footy is distracting again, going for the Wisp Hunt. La Laia has a good amount of wood and he has the Ancient of Lore in place, so that's not the biggest of threats that he can encounter. But, uh, yeah, the Archmage is there and he sees the Ancient of War walking towards the natural expansion of La Laia, and so he has to know what's going on. Yeah, he already scouted the expansion with one footman passing by and he knows that there's an expo heading that direction. Not pulling the creeps, which is kind of surprising. I think he should definitely do that. Just pull the creeps, maybe even the dragon from the top side and the natural creeps to get like as many as possible attacking that tree of life. But in the meantime, there's still na nature's blessing kicking in. We have so many wisp, a nice bank of wood. You said it, you follow light. He can easily transition into tier three whenever he feels like it. We have a Naga as a second hero coming out here for Infi. Trying to do something in the middle. Probably he should just kill the shop there and play it safe. He cannot really be all that aggressive. But as it seems, he feels like he can be as, as aggressive as possible and will try to do something about the expo. But I don't see that being successful at all. No, me neither at the moment. Ring of Regeneration for the Panda as well might help him in creeping later. But here comes Infi. The Naga is so mighty on level 1. The right kicks are so hard. And the Frost Arrows do so much. Level 2 on the Panda right now, but that won't help him too much, I guess. He's still able to defend his Expo. We have the Dryad Slow, so the Archmage is in kinds of trouble. He staffs out, no Disable once again. Mana Burn, and he survives with 120 HP. Losing at least one footy, I guess, too. Yeah, using another Breath of Fire. And finally, we have a level 3 Demon Hunter. You're gonna see that he got a bank out of 2k gold. He didn't build a single footman since he started so he's heavily relying on the few new units that he got he even lined up three upgrades and he's still at 2k gold usually as a human player i would say this is the perfect spot to find yourself in because everything has been construction everything is already paid for and he starts producing immediately he even adds the rifleman he adds mortar teams and if a human player adds rifleman that early he wants to be aggressive and in your face 
right there right now as soon as he hits like 60 to 65 supply he will go there he grabs all the scrolls even grabbing the protection scroll probably have read that beautiful thread that we have <laughs> on reddit explaining why protection scroll is definitely an item worth buying he also transitions all the workers from the expansion over to the main base to call militia later and just have a bunch of bunch more of them and yeah it looks so so good for infi i guess but on the other hand level three panda with a mana stone equipped from the red spot creep here of the human player and the expansion into play i wouldn't be surprised if lola had stretched this game longer but so far he's struggling to find tier three and this will be the major task for him indeed so his tech advantage is kind of out the window if he struggled to get his tier 2 production up at least a bit but lolite is not capitalizing from that at least his expansion is up economical wise both players are on the same and this is his signature uh unit i guess zeppelin micro zeppelin drop coming in for lolite he doesn't have that much damage there is no shredder there are no bears it's just dryads panda and demon hunter and a berserker but maybe you can keep him low on lumber or even go for the peasant line here in the gold and that's exactly what he's going to do he has the mana stone so plenty of mana uh, for him he's going for the towers right away in is sending the workers away mortal team is coming and the first breakers so he has to be careful with his mana pool in the meantime he's not defending this in is going for the tower uh, for, for the counter attack yeah 78 supply against the 50 supply of the night of race of course a lot of supplies in these workers you can see it in the main base also a bunch of workers still standing strong he's not going to defend that one at any point he's setting up a nice flank of towers that he can fall back into as soon as the fight breaks out but he's killing the moon wells and this will be so crucial keeping the night of on 59 supply not able to go over that one master bear is not there yet for the night of player as well so the light knows that he cannot really fall back into anything at the main base he cannot defend it yet because there's nothing to go back to breath of fire combination hitting all the workers in the main base here of the human player he tries to kill the keep here but this one will take so much damage because a lot of workers are still repairing that one. He even used the mana stone and in the meantime all the units are dwindling here. The bears that just spawned from the Angel of Lores are dying right now. And also the Angel of Lore, the first one is dying. The other one is upgrading the master upgrades. He tries to get some more moonwards back at the expansion. But it looks really, really grim here for Loliath. If this master upgrade is through, he might have a chance. Otherwise, it's going to be so hard for him to get it. Uh, but I think it's going to go through. Tree of Eternity is going to go down no matter what. The mortar teams are ready. But if Infi only knew what upgrade was here in the Engine of War, he killed it off before. Gold mine down. One gold mine remaining for La Light. He has some moon wells here, but no production at all. He has to rebuy the Huntress Hall. He has to rebuy the Lords. In the meantime, the keep for Infi is down again. So both players on one base. And if he takes some time here, then um, Infi might be without any production as well. But he's on 72 food. And there's only one bear for La Light. And still the army of Infi is looking so super dangerous. Yeah, the only problem for the human player is that he cannot get breakers because you need tier 2 for that one. But on the other hand, we don't see any production facilities beside that Ancient of War. And this one can only provide you with archers because you don't have a Huntress Hall. And he's not even tacking at the expansion. So this game will not be a super long stretched out kind of game. I wouldn't be surprised if Infi just goes there, kills him, just gets another round of scrolls and then decides to end the game right here, right now. Or probably playing it safe and even getting a town pole to uh, town pole out if it gets dicey. But I don't see that. Why wouldn't you commit to it at this point? Only dryads. You even have a rifleman. If he dives in on the mortar teams, the rifleman can deal efficiently with these dryads. We even see mercenaries being bought. The only kind of additions that he can get to his forces. Flute of accuracy. Adding a, a nice touch here to all the units because he's basically on only piercing damage or ranged units. So this is definitely a nice pickup. But 72 supply against 55, this looks really grim for it's the Lion. super duper grim. He has to rely on his heroes. They are 4-4. He needs amazing Breath of Fires. He needs a great mana burn uh, control. But we see the first Fork Lightning here. The one bear is being stabbed out to the blocker line. For the Lion is gone. The mortar teams are in a perfect situation. Perfect position. As well as the Rifleman. The main damage dealers are untouched. First heal scroll countering that Breath of Fire. The Panda is kind of dropping low. Only two Breath of Fires remaining. The Zeppelin is doing nothing at the moment. 70 food for Infi remaining. 54 for um, the Korean here. Next Breath of Fire hitting fairly good there, but there is another heal scroll used at the moment. 
Yeah, it seems like my inside sources have been right, calling Infi the best human against Knight of at this point, and it really seems that way. I've never seen a human player perform that strong. Also, of course, due to the lack of amazing play from Lolayet at this point, but if you force your opponent into these dicey situations and create multiple threats all over the place, of course you will fall at some point, and it seems like Infi is really, really good in shape, and Lolayet, not that impressive, to be honest. That's true. Um, he plays kind of sloppy. I mean, on Echo, we, we we saw the horrible early game. But also here, I mean, the harass with just one footy got him a wisp and so much time. All the time in the world to get the expo up. Um, not contested at all in the early stages of the game. So, so far it was the early game that definitely won him um, the two maps that we saw. We don't know the next map just yet, but uh, we can only hope that Lolite is stabilizing. The other factor is we saw a lot of best of fives and best of sevens from Lolite now, thanks to the TWCL, thanks to the, all, all the cool leagues that are uh, out there. And it looks like Lolite is always struggling in the beginning. He's kind of down in every single series, whether it be against uh, Focus or Moon or whoever it was. But then he comes back even stronger. So. He has to rely on his uh, mental state to not get into a downward spiral here um, and just come back. And the next map is going to be Twisted Meadows, but we have a 10 minute break before we start things. Kind of funny because people told me there will be five, but yeah, we're going to take the break nonetheless because people definitely need breaks to get some coffee and stuff or water, whatever it is. So I think we also will head into a small commercial break, but besides that, we're also going to keep talking about what just happened because... Of course, Lulai not that impressive. Um, on the other side, Infi on point with everything. This is really like you see with the footman in in the main base, you force the demon hunter back for a second, or even that the demon hunter was not picking up the claws, like right there. Yeah. He was waiting for some reason because he was busy doing other stuff. This is something that you rarely see. Usually everything seems to be on autopilot. You see demon hunter wandering around, killing one of the creeps, going toward the expansion. In the meantime, he pulls the creeps, gets like... The priest out, gets everything out. But we didn't see that from Loliad. So, of course, his performance, he can definitely step one, step that up throughout the series. But he definitely needs to start that one right now. Because other than that, he will be down by three maps. And since this is the best of, uh, best of seven, if you take four, you are out. The game is over. You will be eliminated. Of course, he gets some money. But Loliad is not the kind of guy that is like... Yeah, satisfied with taking third place or second place. He wants to go and win these tournaments and as it seems in the important matches he always seems to struggle yeah that's right will he struggle in map number three on twisted meadows we're gonna see about that we sent you into a small commercial break so have fun with the videos and we'll be right back and we are back with the nwl consolation final infi and law Lyot fighting things off it's looking grim almost pitch black for the korean for law Lyot infi with Almost a perfect performance here on map one and two. Next map is going to be Twisted Meadows. It's starting right now. Indeed it is. We're going to have color switching again. We have Infi in pink and we're going to have Lolite in this light blue in case you have to adjust it. Thanks, mate. And it will be Twisted Meadows. Of course, it is the choice of the Night of player because we have loser's choice after each map. Uh, after each map. Mm -hmm. So we're going to head into the second map that is supposed to be a map for the Knight of Player, after we have seen how he got destroyed on Ancient Isle, that is probably one of the worst maps you can play. But yeah, let's jump into the game real quick. We're gonna head into Twisted Metal, third game of today. The lead is 2-0 right now. Can he increase that advantage? Can he rise to a 3-0 score in that best of seven here? It will be Infi playing as the pink human player, starting at the one o'clock position here on Twisted Meadows and opening up with a super early scout. I wouldn't be surprised to see the same game that we have seen yesterday from him. Uh, not yesterday from him, but that we have seen yesterday from Anima with that early Mountain King opening, scouting for your opponent and trying to punish an super greedy Agent of War creep. And speaking of that crazy greedy Agent of War creep, we have Lolite spawning in this light blue color at the six o'clock position or five o'clock position here off on Twisted Meadows. And he's opening up with that sneaky, peaky, greedy creep at the mercenary camp. I'm having massive spikes here in the game, by the way. Is it the same for you? No, right now it's everything fine. Okay, I hope this will stabilize over uh, the next couple of seconds. Usually it catches up after like one or two minutes. Yeah, you're right. Um, 
This is the Merc Camp creep spot for La Light. This is immediate level two and a half, I guess, plus amazing items, a big consumable, and also, of course, access to the priest and berserkers. But Infi is well aware of that. Immediately placing a farm beneath that, so he has vision of what's going on, he has vision of uh, the item that's gonna drop here. And I'm kind of surprised, it's not a warden, it's a demon hunter. Yeah, it's a demon hunter, and on the other side, it's going to be the Archmage. So Archmage against Demon Hunter, a fairly good matchup for the Knight of Player, of course, because the Demon Hunter can, uh, can be really, really strong against an Archmage. Of course, he also saw the matches that Yumiko played against Luliad, and on top of that, both of the players are aware that they also meet in ladder every now and then, so strategies should not, should not be so super sneaky, and maybe they want to trick each other into believing, you know what, I, I once played against Mo uh, against you, uh, Mountain King on Twisted, probably you will try that again, and we have that peasant in the perfect location to steal the priest whenever he starts creeping that one, and as it seems, he tries to trick him again, and goes for this late laboratory creep spot, we see a wisp scouting that one, but a lot of stuff is happening and you can see that the Knight of Player is not going for the Mercenary Creep spot because he feels it might be too dangerous and he's right with that call. So everything is like being flipped. The table is flipped Indeed. all over the place and we have so many different openings hitting here. This is an immediate harass from uh, Law Light. This might pay off in the end. We get the... Oh, nice. Vamp Aura for the Archmage. Nice support in the early game, but he uh, gets the peasant here. There is a surround on Law Light, and he does not kill the peasant. He cannot fight out of there. This is... Oh, there it is with a detonate, but it's only 25 HP anymore. One fireball. Oh my god, he survives with 10 HP. But he loses the archer again, and now we have free reign over that camp, of course, the one footman is super low and is trapped again, the workers are still standing strong, Vampiric are great to regenerate a little bit of HP whenever they attack, so in general, this is such a blow here, and he's even opening up with an expansion, yeah. I would be so scared as the knight of player to be like tower rushed soon, but he is opening that one up with a delayed tech, not going for that one yet, and he's going to expand. He's not even adding a Huntress Hall to be safe with Huntresses against that. He will just rely on that one, probably thinking about the human player's choices. And if this is an aggression coming out of Infi, this could be GG right now. Just storming in with all the footmen with that beautiful aura. But as it seems, he calls the militia again towards that natural expansion of his choice. Towards that 1 o'clock to 12 o'clock position that he is heading right now. And yeah, this might be the perfect choice as well. Even though that the blind counter expansion is going up on the other side. Yeah, the expansion will be a little faster for Law Light, I guess. And he is pulling three wisps to the expansion position. Not so sure what he wants to do with it. Will he start a protector push? But I don't think so because he doesn't have a Huntress Hall. Will he just use them to dispel? That might be the case. Because he's planting one to the Merc camp, one here for, for vision uh, when Infi starts this orange creep spot. But now the Light finally has the time to get this Merc camp and he gets Scroll of the Beast. Nah, not the best item. Maybe for an early expansion harass this could be great, but uh, he would love to have an Invo Potion or Heal Potion of course. I think the best kind of thing that he could do right now is pull the creeps from the second mercenary camp, get the Priest and the Berserker from that as well. And then try to be like as aggressive as you can be towards that expansion. Maybe even let yourself be surrounded and town portal to your own expansion. Just pretend to, oh, you surrounded me. I have to pull my town portal. Then you go to your own expansion, creep that one, set it up and be aggressive again. So this could also work. Now both of the players bypass each other. We have the mana burn just in time to cancel that level 2 water elemental from being casted. But he's not pulling the mercenaries from the second mercenary camp. He doesn't have the time. Storms in with the demon hunter. Tries to figure out if the expansion is going up. And as it seems, he's successful with that, with that prediction. And he will try to do something about it. He can squeeze the worker through the town hall and the tower and try to do as much damage as possible but as you can see the army is not joining the demon hunter he just tries to be aggressive and at some point he will probably use that staff of teleportation that he bought earlier and speaking of that he just used it heals up in the main base is also setting up the engine of war close to the mercenary camp to creep another spot that expansion is walking towards the gold mine here the tree of life and the the footman is scouting everything so if he sees what's up he doesn't know about the expo yet, but he knows about the Ancient of War. And yeah, seems like he is so on top of that game. Does he know about this? I mean, it's night. Not yet. He knows about the Ancient of War, but okay. he doesn't know about the expo. I don't think he, he, he scouted that creep. 
He walked into the tree. Ah, okay, okay, I didn't see that. So. Okay, so you're sorry for doubting you. I will never do this again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have heard that. Oh, uh, yeah, I told this before. Yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> no, just kidding. So we're gonna see what's happening. Proving the mercenary camp and a scroll of the beast. That can be really, really good for him. Yeah, I think uh, for the human it's slightly better than it is for the night elf in general. Um, on the other side, we see Claws plus nine on the demon hunter from that expansion spot. And the Berserker for Infi. So both players are getting ready to uh, defend their expansions, or in Infi's case, I guess, to attack, because he can feel uh, so good. But here's the Panda, and there's only one Arcane Tower, so there is an opportunity for Lawlight to do some damage. Also, a few of the footmen are super low. A Breath of Fire with that plus nine, you set it on the Demon. And look at the footmen. They're so low, he uses that Scroll of the Beast right away, sends the three super low HP uh, footman away. Now the priest is going to pay the price probably from the demon hunter. Mana burn still alive, but a second one will finish that one off. Demon hunter tries to go into the expansion, tries to create some more time. It seems the footman was scouting uh, the expo attempt here and sees that there's a tree of life for the knight of player already into play. Only one guard at the expo, you said it as well. So uh, this could be like a lot of damage on the workers with that beautiful claw and the circlet plus 11 damage on that demon hunter and he goes ham on the workers. Indeed, first one is dead, second one is about to die, there we go. And how much slaughter can he do? Infi is coming in with the Archmage level 4 already uh, to get rid of that demon hunter. But before he stabs out or town portals out, there will be at least one more casualty and he is dead. So. Demon Hunter still alive, level three and a half. Panda used the time to creep herself up to level two, and he found another clause of attack. The Demon Hunter will be such a beast later on. Yeah, and he's setting up that Ancient of Wind as well. He knew, he knows that uh, earlier the human player crept the laboratory cap, but at some point he might think to himself like, you know, probably I should just get a Zeppelin, it'll be annoying. And if you ha don't have that Ancient of Wind installed with the Hippogriffs, you might be in a lot of trouble. But now, speaking of trouble, we have a bunch of militias going down and there's a Wisp close by that sees the movement and now knows about the second expansion plan from Infi. This would have been super nice to install that second expo into that location because nobody would actually assume that there's a second expo going down in between bases. But with that one wisp spoiling that plan, Infi finds himself in not such a good spot. Mana burn on the Archmage should have waited to steal the Orga Maggie, but he gets the item. Another claw plus nine plus 20 damage already. Pl 26 when he swaps the, the cloth of attack on the panda. That's gonna be horrendous. Here comes another Breath of Fire combination, but it's only level one and he retreats not um, capitalizing off the damage that he done. But there is one more breath and look at the right clicks. Holy shit, he needs to get the Zeppelin to get his first hero out here, focusing on the Zeppelin. Zeppelin, so there's no micro of that anymore, no safe spot for the Archmage, but oh my god, Lawlion is just uh, wiping the floor at the moment with Infi, more support with Dryads, and now they're slow, is there a town portal? Yes, there is, he has to pull it now. And the problem is that the workers will stick around there for another round of Breath of Fire as well as the Demon Hunter hits, oh. and they will pay the price for that greedy kind of plan that got spoiled earlier. Should have town portal out with the workers, never tried to get that expo into play as soon as... The scout went down, and now he picks up a second Zeppelin to pick up all the workers. This is beautiful to keep them alive. Takes to tier 3, gets that blacksmith going, and is probably transitioning into tank play here. Even sets one of the towers up there at the orange spot that he's creeping to have a slot to pick up the item, as well as to have a tower that scouts the movement towards the expansion passing by his main base. But there's only one tower in the main base, and one tower at the expo. So I don't really see how this is like staying alive if Loliad pulls the trigger and is committing to a push maybe with even a Zeppelin drop or not even a Zeppelin drop is necessary. Look at the wide open space yeah. in the main base. He can just walk in and say hello to all the workers exactly. with a bunch of bears and yeah. I don't see Infi winning that game. The floodgates have been opened for the human base and the demon hunter. <laughs> plus 26 and he doesn't even have the orb of venom yet so he might get out of there with plus 25 if he swaps the claw with uh, with the orb but the boots of Quel'Thalas would of course be the big 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 dream here at this spot or the vamp aura for later it is uh... okay devotion aura that is not very nice 
Enfi sticking to his second expansion plan, but there's a Wisp coming to uh, the upper left Clear starting course, position, sorry. so I guess he might walk there as well. Oh, and if scout. this Wisp dies to the creeps, the the scout will also be denied to the expo, and as it seems, this troll is killing the Wisp off, and this one was going toward the expansion oh, that just oh. got crapped by Enfi, so this is a huge blow. The towers will definitely go up, but the Hippogriff is making the way to that expansion, figuring out what's going on. And you can really see how Lolliet is controlling this map so beautifully. I wouldn't be surprised to get a Shredder. And there he is in the main base already getting the first round of Lumber. So a Shredder coming in for the Knight of Play. He is tier 3 now, plus 31 damage on the Demon Hunter. But at some point it could also be too greedy because yeah. you want to have an Invo Potion on the hero as well. Well, and I guess he will. Gets focused, he yeah. will swap the staff. Okay, not even not the staff he plays against tanks, but the circlet most likely. Um will be the casualty to the Invo Potion. On the other side, we see the Flute of Accuracy, and that is an awesome item uh, for whatever Infi is going for. Most likely tanks, yeah, there it is. They uh, benefit from that item as well. And that's going to be 10% more damage on every single tank, and they do great damage. Archmage in kind of trouble. Level 5 he is already. And we all know Mass Teleportation is such a beautiful spell, especially on big maps like uh, Twisted Meadows. Yeah, he should expand in multiple corners right now. He should probably try to retake that expo that he couldn't achieve to get like earlier with like a bunch of workers. Just send them down there. And he's sending down two workers to construct basically a few towers. But in the main base, speaking of towers, only three towers. Expansion, only two towers. And everything seems to be super exposed besides the expansion plans for the second expo as well as the third that is about to go down. So if Loliath commits at some point and just figures out that there's a huge weakness... There are so many holes in that defense that he can just exploit, but so far not realizing that because he's on the back foot. He needs to deal with the towers, needs to cancel them before a lot of towers go up. Speaking of towers, look at the 4 o'clock position. Towers going up, tanks streaming into the main base. Level 3 water elementals providing some more damage as well. Now the footman and the mountain king level 2 comes to that party. And as it seems, Infi is all over the place. Yeah, and he uses the Zeppelin to save this tank. Very well done. The first bear has to go to the Moonwell, saving it here, but the damage is real now. That Oh, nice Storm Bolt and nice Zeppelin Micro again. Infi on point. Here comes Lolite. The Panda is kind of exposed, needs some Moon Juice, and forces Infi into a town portal. I think he lost one bear. But yeah, apart one from bear that, went. One bear and Muddy died. And Muddy died. But on top of things, he cancelled all the towers here. So second expansion for Infi, still not in play. And he scouted the third one as well, setting up an ancient protector. And of course, uh, with the fast demon hunter, he can kill them all uh, one after another. And oh, Zeppelin is dead. And so are the two tanks inside. Yeah, but the downside of everything is that the human hero levels are really, really good. Like level 5 Archmage is always nice to have level 3 water elementals. You can basically creep every single camp on the map with level 3 water elementals. And the help of the other heroes, Mountain King close to level 3 with the ivory towers now. Transitioning a few items over to that second hero. Boots of Speed now equipped as well as the Pen of Energy on the Mountain King. So he will turn into a beast because he's hitting level 3. And probably a Pen of Energy or Katka's Gem of... What is it? I cannot Help. see it. It's still Chinese letters for me. Yeah, uh, me too. So we're still waiting. Archmage's Amulet of Spellsheet would also be super nice. And it is the Orb oh, of okay. Darkness. Well. Is that the right term? Yeah, it's the Orb of Darkness, but uh, not the biggest item um, that he could get. The Paladin is out, and the question is for how long? He got a Potion of Healing, but he slowed, and the mighty, mighty, mighty right clicks of the Demon Hunter. Insta-kill and level 4 on the Panda, and now he realizes, alright, the Shredder did a favor to the Night Elf. Everything is exploited. He's going into the towers. The Panda has a nice amount of Breath of Fire, two at a time. He gets rid of the Peasant line. Level 5 on the Demon Hunter. Is there another Breath of Fire for him no he doesn't want to risk it since there's a, a mountain king with stormbolt rejuvenation on basically everything that there is <laughs> using the staff on uh, the footman here don't know if that's the correct choice but where's the next breath of fire i want to see the workers die there it is quad kill 80 supply against 50 supply from the human player. He is not even producing anything. He's not getting any more units. He tries to set up more towers but speaking of that he also likes to Demon get like, more oh. wood and yeah, dodges the bullet there with the, with the Demon Hunter. But in the end, like, all the workers died. And I think Loliot figured out that there's a huge weakness 
for yep. the main base there. But also look at the expo, only two towers. It's so sad to see that there are two towers and <laughs> he's not punishing that because he can easily stream in with like two or three bears and kill that one in the meantime while he's fighting in the main base. The altar of kings is down and that opens a nice opportunity to killing heroes. Of course, you can always get them back at the uh, tavern in the middle, but that's so costly. Mountain King is struggling. In the meantime, Lolliet moved his uh, Tree of Life to Infi's next expansion in the upper left and killed all of the towers there, setting up the Untangled Gold Mine right now. So he's denying him that. Killing the workshops now and the Demon Hunter is coming back with full HP, full mana, mana burn number one. Um, but no more water elementals in the meantime. Two griffins high up in the air against the bears, but it's such a huge amount of bear. Siege bears with raw. It's absolutely amazing. He's going for the demon hunter. There's no town pole. There's no info potion. We talked about this before, but there's the staff again. I forgot about that. Yeah, Sorry. but now <laughs> the castle is the target of the choice. Two attack upgrades for the bears and only two towers trying to keep everything alive. And the, pan uh, the demon hunter steps in again with full HP coming back to that party. And he will be so damn strong. It seems like Loliot finally realizing that there are so many weaknesses in that strat that Infi is trying to use here. It's just being too greedy all over the spot. The expansions got denied. Second expansion into play here for the human, uh, for the Knight of Player. In the end, he added up all the expos that he could get. He's probably setting up a third expo sooner or later where the uh, Ange Protector is located. So far, he still tries to get the fortress gone but with the masonary 3 and the 3250 hp on that castle and 8 armor it will be a tough call to make yeah there was a lot of repair going on and no mana anymore on the panda to get rid of him but now mass reju still plenty of bears here i think he lost two bears to the griffins which is not perfect but of course he wanted that staff to save his demon hunter level five and a half for the first here we have uh one, two, th three gold mines running for Lolliet only. Oh no, th uh, th three gold mines for Infi as well. So in Echo, they are pretty even. Um, Infi is even ahead because he's in no upkeep. His opponent is in low upkeep. But yeah, the workshop number two is gone as well. And his heroes are kind of low. The only army he has is a knight and a griffin. And that's about it. He even gets a shot back there to get like more mana potions for the panda to continue the siege. 150 mana burn hitting the Mountain King, draining the mana pool completely, even though he got like the pen of energy on him. Two guard towers, we said it, not enough to keep up with all of that. Steps to the other side, goes to the Arcan World, probably buys another step or a Town Pole. He buys a Town Pole, probably wants to get out of that misery and relocate to another expo to create like maybe a threat to the. What is it, like 11 o'clock position expansion that is into play there? He's aware that there's an expo because he killed the towers earlier. One of the knights is completely out of position, got stabbed back to the gold line. But this is not saving him. It's only saving him for now. But if the knight of player wants to kill it, he can definitely do that. Level 6 on the demon hunter is not super far away any longer. Level 5 on the panda, level 3 breath of fire hitting so hard. Town Paul used this, the first Town Paul on the Mountain King, there's a second Town Paul. Not even sure what he wants to accomplish. Is he sacking his main base? Is he sacrificing everything that he is? He will not be able to produce griffins. He will not be able to produce tanks if he loses that fortress. So this is a huge problem for him. Yeah, that gold mine is definitely denied and now he gets rid of uh, the castle. So no more griffins for Infi and that's such a mighty weapon. But can he get a counter kill somehow? Knights? are fairly strong. He has the Waterlands, he has a Griffin. So there is damage on Infi's side, that's for sure, but will it be enough? That's the other question. No Town Portal for Lolight, so he cannot react to that, but of course it's not that big of a deal. He's setting up another expansion at the bottom right position, and uh, this expansion is also working very, very well for him. He's getting prepared for new tanks with more Engines of War. And Infi is not even killing that one because he sees, all right, that's going to take too long. I'm not uh, wasting my time on that expo. I really don't know what Infi is thinking. Probably just tries to drain some more energy from his opponent to force him into a longer game and force his concentration on this game. Maybe still wondering, hmm, is there an island expo going up? Because sometimes if you are like too overconfident and you think like, hmm, I, I should have won, he should have left by now. 
you will slowly realize that there might be something keeping your opponent in the game. We have a few towers going up there in between the expansions where the water elemental is still attacking that one. Paladin finds some experience. Cut this gem of health adds 300 HP to the third hero here of the human player. Level 4 in the Mountain King with 2 levels in Bash and 2 levels in Bold. Level 5 Archmage, but in the end 48 supply remain for the human against the 68 of the Night Elf player. The main base is about to dry out there for the Night Elf. And we're gonna have another expansion as well as the tree moving towards the red spot, I guess. Now we have multiple Ancient Protectors created there. Probably a Town Portal coming in and there it is. Very aggressive, I suppose. Yes! Oh my god, he surrounded the Mountain King with the Town Portal! Beautiful hero kill by Law Light. And that gives him level 6 Metamorphosis on the Demon Hunter. One of the strongest ultimates in the entire game. Splash damage, range damage, increased attack speed, everything is just great once this ultimate hits. He gets the Dragon Hawk with a mana burn, getting rid of the towers, even cannon towers being bought by Infi. Just the desperation move, I guess, is of course great against the Dryads. He sees the expansion here is fortified with four Ancients of Wars. What can he do? The Mountain King is not here. Maybe he's gambling and wants to get some experience for mass teleport and wants to end the game with that. But I highly doubt that that could bring a change in Infi's game. Maybe you read it wrong all along. Maybe he never scouted that expansion for real. Because it seems like like right now he was scouting for expansion and tried to figure out like, Lolite, how did you achieve your position? How did that work? How could you come up with such a nice eco? Maybe he was not aware of that expo because he never sent a tank down there. He was never actually down there at the expansion doing anything. So maybe that expansion got completely unscouted and I have never seen such a ridiculous town portal surround. That was something beautiful that I haven't seen in Warcraft in a long time or ever. Oh yeah, really really cool. Now the army has to fight uh, the Demon Hunter, but they're too scared and Infi is calling the GG. Lolliot catching up with the Emperor of China. It is 2-1. Uh, 2-1 to to one it is. Finally we're gonna see a good game coming out of Lolliot. First game of today that was really impressive. In terms of like establishing a sick map control with the Hippogriff Riders, setting up everything that he needed at the time that he needs it, and also getting that expo into play, that might have been a risky choice, because losing that first archer, being surrounded, barely making it out of it, and your early game was just down the drain. Also not able to creep the mercenary camp early, and ag aggression with a level demon hunter against a level 2 uh, archmage already. And also not going for the expansion at all. Only two towers, one guard tower, one arcane tower. Not not punishing that one. But in the end, his his control with the army, splitting of the army, also denying the second expo, played a crucial role in that victory. Do you think Infi was overconfident because the first two games went so well? I don't want to say that Infi is somewhat of a guy that maybe um, comes across cocky sometimes a little bit. That this is like the punishment for being cocky in game and just being punished and lose that game. Don't know. Maybe you just was like heading to the wrong kind of strategy that he wanted to use because the tanks were not paying off that well. True. He built uh, three workshops, I guess, and only produced like four tanks and set, uh, and sent them in once. Um, might have been the wrong choice. <clears throat> to go for that, uh, of course, at the expansion, they would have been put to good uh, to 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 better use, definitely. Next map, last refuge. Last refuge it is. When it comes down to Hawk, he says this is one of the best maps you can play against Night Elf, and we have seen the reasoning for that as well. Super narrow positions, super hard to fight in with the bears against like a tier two army. And yeah, in general, a good map for a human player. And this is the reason why Infi chooses that one. We are still in the best of seven. Don't get me wrong. We have only seen a best of three yet. And Infi was able to take this one to his account with, with two to one. But now we're going to head into the later stages. And a best of seven can be really challenging. Also keeping like your concentration up and stuff. So it will be interesting to see how both of the players make it throughout the series. Infi, I think, a little more used to a situation like this, to longer series. Laliad, he hasn't played uh, too many big tournaments in the past four years compared to Infi. I mean, if you think of any top three in the big uh, tournaments we, we saw in Warcraft, Infi, almost everything, uh, uh, 
every time made it to at least the semifinals or even the grand final. In like 75% of the cases, he won the tournaments. So he's known to situations like that. Lord Lyot on the other side, his biggest achievement was the, uh, the consolation final at WCA. Of course, by now, he was in finals like TWCL a few times and Holds Cups, etc. But that doesn't really count because there's not so much at stake um, that it is now. That all plays into this next game and that next game is starting as we speak yep that's true i'm gonna grab a little bit of water so i'm gonna leave you for one minute and all then right. i will be back and yeah have fun already without me <laughs> it's of course a little uh sadder without you but the game is starting as you see last refuge as we mentioned before korea versus china it still is so, we mentioned before that La Liet, he uh, almost every time starts series with losses and then comes back strong. Will it be the case today as well? We're about to witness. Last Refuge in the bottom left as the yellow Night Elf player, bronze medalist WCA, Master of the Warden. It is La Liet from South Korea, his opponent, the Emperor. The one who led 2-0, but now lost the last map on Twisted. It is Infi. WCA winner 2014, WEC winner 2014, multiple WC3L winner, and of course PGL and WCG winner as well. He won it all. He still has the fire inside him. He still hungers for more uh, victories, for more successes, and this would be one of the biggest uh, ones in the spring of 2016 in Warcraft. Let's see. I'm pretty sure he's going for the expansion again. Question is, will he go for uh, the green spot and then expand? Or will he take a slower expansion after the Merc camp here? Or will he do something completely crazy to just uh, throw Laliot off? On the other side, the only question here is Demon Hunter or Warden. It is the Demon Hunter. It worked well for him on TM. Didn't work that well on... Ancient Isles, but I think <clears throat> that was due to the fact that he kind of um, misplaced his Demon Hunter entirely. And now the Harass might work a little better. He's not going for a greedy shops uh, creep. That You could do that to get like a big uh, potion, big healing, big invul, big mana. But no, he's playing it safe. Very, very safe, actually. Um, Ancient of War creep. With the Mauler here, it's not the biggest of deals. On the other side, we once again see the Archmage for Infi, and I think yours is about to come back, which is always nice. True. There it is. And another Engine of War right here. So he will go for the Orange Creep spot, and then maybe even eat through the trees and go for I Infi's uh, Shop Creep. Yeah, and he's banking for a Hunter's Hold, so this is probably two Ancient of War Huntresses coming out of the Knight of Players. So far, he's not constructing that one. We have a Footman now scouting. He should probably realize that there's only one Moonwell in the main base, and this is usually a huge tell and indicator of what's going on. And yeah, as he goes into that main base, figures out that there is a bunch of Wisps that he can hit. He also sees the second Moonwell constructed as well as the Hunter's Hold, so completely aware that there will be Huntress is on the field, but he could get the scout. He, he just misses the scouting information of the second Ancient of War and will probably start looking for that one. Also starts the creep spot here at the natural expansion with a bunch of malicious four in total. It is two footmen going at it and now creeps that one. I'm not even sure if he will start the expansion there because he's not getting more workers at this point. Of course, he's a play stack and this is the reason why he's not getting more workers. But I wouldn't be surprised if he figures out there, there he sees the second Ancient of War, gets the confirmation. And yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he can the expo plans at all. But he sticks there with his peasants, and I guess... Yeah, exactly. An infi without an expansion is no infi. And so he's sticking to his guns. The question is, will he get a lot of towers up? Or will he get other support? I mean, the Merc camp is not crapped. He would love to get the Berserker. Or the Shadow Priest, of course. But here comes the Demon Hunter immediately for the harass. This is Lolite as we know him. Yeah, going on the aggressive, forcing his opponent back, and so far it's looking good. The two workers are nicely microed in between the tower and the expansion. Footman going at the Demon Hunter, doing some damage. We don't have the evasion yet, because the the, creeps, uh, the creep was cancelled there. The archer is hiding out, the Archmage is coming back with the Water Elemental as well. 
There is cooldown on the water elemental now. He's not willing to let the demon hunter burn him and deny him that second water elemental. Now it's on the field. He's probably grabbing that boots of speed. Yeah, and he sets the town pole yet again to get the boots of speed and the dust of appearance. And this is the right call. And not killing any of these workers, even though they are super low HP. Some of the human player would have sent them back to replace them with full HP ones. Infi, aware of the situation, knows that he can pull this off with the beautiful micro in between the hall and that tower and keeps both of them alive constructs the expo with four workers without any trouble so far now waiting to get the staff of teleportation so that he can step out whenever he gets in a dicey situation and yeah it looks really good for the human player even though that the threat is just started the huntresses are streaming in more and more are coming do we have the ultra vision upgrade i don't think so yet but the huntresses are doing a beautiful job with the bouncing glaives killing the first worker a worker here but also a level one demon hunter still yeah, he needs one more casualty of Infi to advance to level 2 and get the evasion. That is a big um, a big thing. 15% evasion is a lot of tankiness that he gets here, but Infi is preparing well for this. A lot of footmen. I think it was the right call um, for Lolliot to go there, use the time, because he was sandwiching the workers here. As you mentioned before, he squeezed them in. Now he could attack from two sides, and so Infi was not able to save them anymore. We have watch awards for Infi and that is amazing. Yeah, that's amazing indeed. You can get like so much information and information is key. Information in Warcraft is so important. If you know the movement of your opponent, if you know the exact unit composition, you can punish him so hard. Now the Archmage uh, staffing in with the Staff of Teleportation being mana burned, no water elemental available. He gets the mercenaries, adds them to his forces, kills that footman, goes probably up to level 3 after finishing that one and boots of Keltalas. Also an amazing item on the Demon Hunter, add some more DPS to him and yes, he will be level 3 after creeping this and then he has to hit the Expo hard, he needs to create another threat, probably some Ancient Protectors going up somewhere, so far we don't see that. It would be a huge mistake if he now transitions into like a defensive kind of playstyle with an Expo plan on his own side, that would definitely not work and as we see it, 5 workers, 5 Wisp marching down that ally in between the main base of the night elf and the expansion and we're gonna see a lot of protectors going down soon oh yes tower push by la Lion. he has everything that he needs amazing items so much attack speed he gets plus six agility from that boots of quartala so he gets additional attack speed and that boosts his damage by so much on top of the plus six that uh, he gets from them as well now five huntress plus the demon and where are the ancient protectors or is it just for dispo we'll see about that there is a Berserker for Infi, of course, super... Uh, oh no, it is for La Lion, I'm sorry about that. So he stole that one, and that's also very important. The Shadow Priest is gonna go down, most likely. Yeah, the Footmen are chasing the mercenaries here, so he gets the kills on them, but the Footmen are suffering as well. Yeah, Footmen are suffering from the Bouncing Glaives. Malicious, even though they are... Archmage, apart. down! Archmage gets stomped by the Demon Hunter, and it looks like we're gonna have the equalizer of that series. We're gonna head into that 2-2 score overall. Archmage not stepping out there in time, was killed by the Demon Hunter. Boots of Keldalas also playing a huge role into that one, together with the Glove of Haste. Increasing the DPS of the Demon Hunter by a huge margin, buys back the Archmage, but without mana, without being full HP, he's completely useless. Also, the Militia duration is down. And the crucial mistake was that he wanted to repair the towers, but he had zero wood at the expansion, and he could not repair them. So this was the biggest problem of them all. Now we're gonna see that he had a scroll of healing from the shop here to heal up his footman, but that Huntress cancels all the healing. GG from Infi, and we're gonna have the equalizer 2-2, and we are basically down to another best of, what is it? Best of five? Best of no, actually three, we don't right? have like best of five. We have equal scores. Did we have you? a best of three again, right? Mm, really. Whoever takes two maps now yeah, will win. Yeah, yeah, true. We, yeah, yeah, best of three it is. And that's the law light we know from WCA. That's the law light that we all expected to see. That's the exactly uh, law light we want to see. This is the playstyle um, that killed the Chinese at WCA. I don't think it was the Warden. Um, that, that really brought the problems to the Chinese, but it was the great demon hunter control on top of punishing greedy expansions and maybe even stubborn expansions. Because yeah. it was a horrible situation for him to expand, you mentioned it in the cast, um, but he still kept on doing this. I mean, maybe once in your life you have to go for a rifle push if a situation like that is so bad 
as it was here on Last Refuge. And the decision making of La Liet, um, you pointed it out as well, not going for attack, not going for late bears, but punishing this wrong decision by Infi, which is super rare, um, immediately won him the game. Yeah, immediately won him the game without any trouble. This is kind of sick. But it's also like you can blind counter Infi from the start. Because you will always know what's about to happen. You will always know what what's going like to happen throughout the different stages of the game. You just know, okay, he sets up the expansion. He goes for a small creep spot. He definitely does some aggression, but it's not overextending. And if you figure out what to do in the certain stages of the game, like mid, early and late game, I think you can overcome that. At Twisted Metals, we have seen like the mid and late game struggled a little bit. And Lolite's late game was super tight with that Hippogriff scouting everything, aware of the Expos. And on, um, on Last Refuge, we just have seen a blind counter to that Expo. So I was kind of surprised, even after scouting both Ancient of War, scouting the Huntress Hall, I think every human, every U European human would have decided to know, like, you know what, I cannot expand at this point. He will stream in with so many Huntresses. But sometimes the Chinese people make it work, or Chinese players make it work, the top ones. They can just defuse the threat by having like multiple water elementals and so on. But he brought like five wisps. He will yeah. detonate everything that you have. And if you don't have water elementals and no mercenaries, you cannot deal with the huntresses. And yeah, the towers were too late. He could not repel them. The blind counter strat worked really, really well. All right. We have another break here. Five minutes before we go into the last session of today. It's 2-2. Two -two. Whoever wins four maps wins. So we have another best of three coming here in the NWL. King of Kings, Constellation Final, who's gonna advance? Is it La Light? Will he make his comeback real? Or is Infi coming back? We're about to witness in five minutes. Small commercial break from our side, and then we'll be back. See you in a sec. As the video ends, I think we can uh, continue the broadcast here. NWL Constellation Final, Infi versus La Light. Two to two in this best of seven series in the NWL King of Kings season number one. The loser of this game will go home with $1,250 and the bronze medal. The winner has $2,500 guaranteed and the silver medal guaranteed, but he will play the Yumiko tomorrow in the grand final for $4,200. Yeah, that is quite some nice price money together and pick up there. But in the meantime, a small recap, just like from my view, we had amazing games. The King of Kings thing is so amazing. The only thing that lacks for me personally is the lack of European players in it. But seeing these legends, Korean against Chinese people in that, and even, even now in the late stages, we still have one Chinese guy in the final. We have a Chinese against Korean still in the, in the consolidation final. We could have had, or we, we can still have um, China against Korea grand final. That would be sick. Um, but nonetheless, even the human mirror final would be uh, a crazy, crazy story. Who would have believed that fly gets dropped out like this and stuff? So just it just has been an amazing tournament. NWL, the King of Kings. I hope we're gonna see a second season. It's amazing. I'm. I don't want to say too much, but I'm pretty sure we can not announce, but suggest there's gonna be a second season because uh, I talked with the admin today. And he said, we, uh, okay, um, sometimes we have problems with Korea versus China uh, connection because the internet in, in China is becoming worse in the evening um, hours when too many people are using the Chinese internet. And I said, well, we are working on a solution with hotspots and stuff, so maybe we can advance that situation in season number two. And he said, okay, that would be awesome. So... Maybe there are plans for season two. Maybe uh, w w with a better hotspot solution, maybe we can get uh, one or two Europeans in it as well. That would, of course, be the dream. Absolutely. We're still waiting for Luliet. He might be AFK because they announced that break time. So it's yeah. completely fine. I think he, players also need a little bit of time to recover, get their minds refreshed by just having, I, I don't know, like a small snack, just like walking a little bit in the apartment having a good time <laughs> and then sitting in front of the computer for like at least one or two hours people uh, are... we will have at least two more maps but in total we can still have three more that would be lovely to finish the best of seven in a four to three for any of these candidates and yeah uh so, people are asking how late the grand final is going to be tomorrow that depends on who is playing because as i mentioned before uh, chinese versus 
Korean connection is kind of bad in the evening hours. It's now around 10 p.m. in, in China. Um, so if China plays versus China, so Yumiko versus Infi, we're going to play the grand final tomorrow at 13 CEST. If uh, Yumiko plays versus La Liot, we're going to start at 10 CEST. Awesome, awesome. 10 CST will be super early for us. Not not no. super crazy early, but well, still kind of early. It's like 10 hour time. It's okay. I mean, you can get breakfast and stuff. It's all good. I think I will be late for that, but yeah, I will definitely join that one. Still going to the gym tomorrow? Of course. I will not skip out of the gym for... Pumping like, the irons. Pumping, pumping some irons with Mike. Them instruct the boys. Uh, really? You, you got an instructor? There's like, and you don't have a personal instructor, but they are like luring a few guys around. Like they have like really cool trainers, to be okay. honest. Cool. Good for you. Um, and I have this sick schedule that I have to keep like myself attached to. And I'm really willing to uh, get trained and shit. So well, let's see about season. that. <laughs> All right. Let's see about that. So I will definitely be late for the casting if it's at 10. I hope that Lolai makes it. So okay, I think Gotta Remo be... could be there in time. So maybe I start ah, with Remo perfect. and oh, 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 we do a nice uh, threesome again. <laughs> we'll see. Whenever, about... whenever you feel like it, All absolutely right. no problem. Uh, okay, Infi is here. Lolai doesn't seem he's ready. Uh, or is he? Yes, Dude, he we're is gonna now. have Ted in the game. Nice. So we're gonna have a Chinese broadcaster as well. Coming from all different directions. Chinese, Korean and the English broadcasting team located in Germany. <laughs> Warcraft is so weird sometimes. But yeah, connecting people, that's what it's all about. And speaking of what it's all about. It's all about map number five here. It's gonna be Amazonia. And yeah, once again, a hard creep spot right at the start for the expansion. Can be punished. But as you mentioned before... Um, Humans have adapted to this. Yeah, humans have adapted. They figured out how to creep that. We will probably see that one. Yesterday, Anima was not showing us how to creep it because he relies on the rifleman. But as you have said it a couple of times, we will not see rifleman from this guy ever without an expo. It's it's not going to happen. I think he had his fair share of playing rifleman and decent, with non, uh, uh, decent to no success at all with that. So he completely threw this strategy out of the window and he's heavily relying on an expansion plan. And yeah, he's he's not going to play that other kind of strats. Nope. Like also not the reprisal strategy with the double sanks and also skipping out on the expansion. It's not going to happen. So Law Light was down 0 to 2 and Infi showed almost zero weakness in map 1 and 2. But he showed strange decision making in map number three something very unusual for him and i think that was the case in map number four as well so will he be stubborn yeah he, he will be stubborn to go for that expo i guess uh, he knows how to creep it so the danger will not be as high we have seen games that lasted four minutes here on this map because the demon hunter with immolation was punishing this natural expansion creep so hard what's the key behind uh, protecting your army and yourself from this harass you will need like seven militia, seven to eight militia, or you can do it like in splits. You can send in six and you bring like three more the later, like later throughout that creep spot. And what you do is like you never attack with your archmage. You basically just summon two water elementals, send them in so that the golem is, uh, the golem is attacking the water elemental at all time. And the archmage, as long as you don't attack the creeps, you don't get bolted, you don't get slowed, you don't get anything. So you shift the focus from the units whenever the trolls attack your units, you shift the aggro towards the water elementals by attacking your own units. And in the meantime, you just creep the entire spot. And there's not too much that other races can really do about that. The only kind of threat that I can think of is definitely the threat of like two wisp coming in and detonating both of your water elementals because then you take a lot of damage on all the units and immolation would be the perfect call then on the other side if you get the mercenaries out before that happens if you pull that out and get the priest on the field and dispel the water elemental this is also a huge threat and yeah speaking of threats that are created we're gonna have huntresses again for Luliad. so he really learned his lesson he wants to be aggressive against an expansion and this is probably a slippers of agility plus three no it is the mantle of intelligence plus three Okay, that's... And light is passing. Yeah, huge spikes for me as well. Um, 
so let's see maybe he has the same problems as eyewitness at the moment but yeah huntress opening um the creep from the light was very very good uh the positioning of the engine of war plus the archer um made the wind of lightning shield or the lightning shield attack all three creeps at the same time so he's super duper fast with that creep spot and he might have the time to attack here with the demon hunter and yeah the pressure is coming with huntress uh, yeah with huntresses is this uh double engine of war it's probably only one engine of war transitioning into tier two and then setting up an expansion that we have seen quite some time at the green spot that he's still creeping with the demon hunter because you can wall this one off with the engine of war and can just construct a tree of life at this position eat through the trees and set up that expo i don't think that he will commit to a tier one push again because other than that we would see a second engine of war already located close to the goblin merchant sure. And we don't have that yet, so I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe he's even using both of the mercenary camps and stays on tier 1, but that would still be a, somewhat of a surprise. Okay, players are ready. We are ready. 3, 2, 1. Here we go. Let's see if the spikes are gone now. And yeah, it seems to be okay for me. Mental of Intelligence it is. You were right. So more attack uh, damage and also more mana on the Archmage. This is a nice little pickup. For Infi right from the get-go on the other side we have the Mantle of Intelligence as well. And it is double Ancient of War Huntress. Yeah, it is double Ancient of War you were right all along. So we're gonna have a lot of Huntresses streaming out. Using the same strat twice is something that you can do if your opponent is as stubborn as it seems. If he really relies on that expansion. We don't see a Wisp coming in. Finally it comes from the other side. Kids, one of the workers. Detonate on one of the water elementals. It's gone. Needs to be careful, he can easily be surrounded, but speaking of that, he pops the Immolation, he is level 2, Immolation and Evasion kicking in, doing so much damage, barely taking any damage here from the human, of course, drops down to 50%, kills that one, kills another worker, and this is devastating, and it's completely fine for the Night Elf to take so much damage if he accomplishes as much as he just did. Absolute carnage at the expansion of Infi. Look at the corpses. One, two, three, four, five, six. Of course, there are a few creeps involved with this. But, uh, okay, at least the Archmage gets level 3 from this. But so many peasants were killed. Almost level 3 for the Demon Hunter. This is unusual. He buys boots now, I guess. Yes, and he heals up at the moon. But, oh, the moon juice is gone. Yeah, all the moon juice is gone because one of the footmen's died in the main base to that archer, but we have a third moon while going up. It will take some time to replenish the missing HP. He kills the archer with a scout from the laboratory, so the archer is dead. What's important to mention is that we're going to have a level 3 archmage, and that level 3 archmage can do pretty much a lot of damage since we don't have any mana burn available for the night elf. He goes to creep that one here, the little green camp in front of his main base, because he needs that level 3 to level up the mana burn ability to at least be able to burn 50 mana so that the amount of water elementals will be decreased. But on the other side, if he brings as many wisps as he brought on the uh, fourth map it was, last refuge, yeah. then I think water elements are definitely not the threat that will prevent this game from yeah. being successful from him. Maybe he even goes for level 2 evasion. And no, that makes no sense. Why not? Even if the demon does not taking so much damage, you really don't want to have water elementals on the field against the huntresses, because level two water yeah, elementals do a good share of damage. But you can bring wisps. Yeah, but still, level two evasion is. Re you rather get level two emulation, I guess. I don't think so. I think it's yeah. better. Um... Do you have your tool? Can you? No, you cannot use your tool here. Oh, so I we can, don't can, know can, what yeah. kind of skill set he went to, and he gets the mercenaries. This is so good. He now brought the wisp. Three wisp close to that tree line there with the orange camp still available. We're gonna have the uh, the dispel from the priest, the berserker with the damage. We don't have defense yet. We're gonna see a few militias coming out, scouting for ancient protectors in front of the main base because sometimes you want to have that. He dispels one of the water elementals immediately. Still got one more dispel going for him. Do we have another water elemental available? Yes, there it is. This is the last remaining one. He can even dispel the scroll of the beast that is about to be used here by the human player, the only item that can really do something. The god tower is killed by the mercenaries, so nice addition. From the berserker is not even repairing that one in time with enough workers but the demon hunter and the units are kind of surrounded no dispel yet of the scroll of beast we still have the protector going up finally we're going to see a wisp coming that location dispelling the water elemental as well as the raw come on not doing that one yet kills a few of these malicious kills the water elemental uses the mana burn so it's definitely that skill set yeah. 
and the Huntress is like cleaning up the Bouncing Glaive, the Forest Troll doing so much damage, but the Arc Demon Hunter has to be careful here. Thanks for covering because I got huge spikes in this and now the Demon Hunter is in trouble. One more fireball and he wow. dies, but no, he escapes. Beautiful by Law Light getting away with that uh, boots of speed, obviously. Archmage can't do too much against it and now he's in problems because he's getting chased by the Hunters, but there's a stab of teleportation. The damage will not be enough. But awesome defense there by Infi. The raw scroll didn't get dispelled. The water element in the end got dispelled. He now needs to shop because the first guard tower in the main base, er, in the main base, there we don't have any towers. But at the expansion, we're gonna have one guard tower. So probably shifting the targets to the main base might be something that Lolite is interested in. He can even get the Ze uh, the zeppelin soon so that he can jump into that main base and try to create like multiple threats here. Archmage's mana burned. No more. No more um, water elementals and there we see a demolition in the peon line doing so much damage and he has to town pole to his main base to heal up. Now it hits day he will probably get the zeppelin to micro his units and this turns out to be a good game for Infi on the other hand if he's able to stay in that game for a little longer. The second guard tower is covered or almost surrounded by the trees. This is in a beautiful position and it seems like Infi is slowly but steadily stabilizing in that yeah. game and securing himself a really, really nice position. Uh, still a lot more of aggression coming from Lolliot. He cannot really go back. I think he didn't start the tech. No, he did not start the tech. He's fully committing to Mass Huntress. He even brought the Shredder. Huge investment from him. And of course, a lot of uh, mercenaries, but it doesn't pay off. Now, Infi with the shop, he has the Zeppelin to heal everything up and save units one after another. Towers are ready, and he is taking to tier two to get uh, mortar teams and casters, most likely. And the longer the game goes, of course, the better it is for the Chinese. There's no expansion for the Korean. There's no tier two units for the Korean. There's no second hero for the Korean. He started off great. But the second attack wasn't too good for him. Maybe it was a ping issue as well, but uh, Infi did defend this nicely. Right. Yeah, it seems like the blind counter strategy is not blind countering this expansion this time. Even though he went to Huntresses with double Rex, Infi for some reason was able to stay alive, get the towers now into play and just secure himself a really, really nice position. We're gonna have a Zapper coming, and Lolite nowadays is kind of famous for using his Zappers. He is using it in every single matchup. I've seen him use it against Orc to detonate the Orc Boros of Focus. Now we will try to detonate some of these towers, but not sure if he's really successful with that one. Zapper is coming in. The Demon Hunter is tanking the damage from the towers, and so far the Huntresses are not getting the perfect trades against the Footman. The Zapper is running in, he almost blocked that one with the Peasants, a few of them died to the explosion. Huntress is streaming out to the other side. Demon Hunter also needs to get back to his main base to heal up again. He's level 4.5, if he gets like a more, more, a few more crucial kills, he could go up to level 5 and probably level 6 at some point. But so far he struggles to do that and level uh, tier 2 is 70% done for the human player. He gets the towers back up, heals up his workers with that beautiful scroll of regeneration that he, he's about to use there as soon as the footmen come to the party. And yeah, he's stabilized and he's in a good spot. Indeed, I think the zapper play was great, getting rid of the um, getting rid of the towers, getting rid of some workers. But was it worth the investment? I don't know because he's not following it up with more damage because everything was so low. But now he's bringing in more wisps once again to detonate or once again to, for ancient protectors. We're about to witness that. There's only one heal scroll and super low HP on the demon hunter. Is he trying to go for a surround? I think he was, but he kind of missed it here. Scroll of healing being used immediately. Detonate. Nice. One Water Elemental split here by uh, by Infi. Now Immolation is into play again, but the Zeppelin saves. Yeah, and he cannot get rid of the Zeppelin, so this one will save every single footman. And then later he can heal them up again. The towers are about to be done in the expo. Three guard towers should be enough. Archmage level 4 with the level 2 aura. This is too much to handle for Luliad, and it seems like... This is why Infi prefers to have an expansion into play because he really knows how to deal with these pushes. Last Refuge, not that successful. Amazonia, perfect play, completely countering that one, even without like too many units on the field. Beautiful play there by Infi. Indeed. Um, things started off great, but this, this is the perfect example for Infi. It doesn't really matter um, how much damage he takes in the early game. Because he has the strength to come back from that. He has 
the patience and he knows of course how uh, to to deal against this and this is I think a unique ability that no other player has except from Infi to to execute something like this yeah it's kind of crazy to see that I don't really know how he does that because usually human players crumble under the pressure from a lot of huntresses usually and there's not too much that you can do about it but for some reason he always got the perfect balance of militias and footmen to that also adds the towers in time and just makes it as hard as possible for his opponent and yeah it worked really well and i wouldn't be surprised if he does it again on secret valley because he really likes that and he will just stick to his plans and so far it's paying off so the next map what's it gonna be it is Secret Valley. Secret Valley. Yeah, definitely a good map for Huntresses again because yeah. you have two healing fountains. We have seen that like yesterday as well, Anima, on that new map, Concealed Hill. So, yeah. Wouldn't be surprised to see Huntresses coming out of that night of again, but this time I don't think that he will commit to Huntress pressure again. I feel with, uh, with the heal fountains, Demon Hunter is even stronger because you can heal him up at the fountain so you don't need to use so much uh, moon juice so i think we're gonna see the tactics again but maybe la Liot expects infi to expect the demon hunter emulation play and that's why he's going for a warden just to i mean the warden yeah. is, is not that great on, on on secret valley usually you wouldn't play her but just to trick your opponent go for warden yeah, that that could really that could work really well. I think like tricking you, uh, tricking him into that one. Also, you can heal up your warden quite efficiently also at the fountain. So it could be something that he's thinking about because I've seen him use the warden on that map a couple of times. Also, with the panda later stages are also great here on Secret Valley. You can easily transition into late game with the healing fountain after the fights when you have like breakers against bears, like tier two against tier three. You can send the bears to the fountain to heal up again. You don't even use the rejuvenation because sometimes you are burned out of mana after a fight on them from the feedback ability from the breakers. So, yeah. This could be a crazy game all over again or he uses some crazy strats but he's down a map in that last regard of like being alive in the best of seven cars this is a match ball the first one that infi can uh, can do and he can win that best of seven and advance to the grand final but yeah let's see hopefully lolai is not not dying under that pressure of being in an important match again just like he dies against focus for that what was it again second season of twcl the... yeah that was also something that I thought Lulite would have been an easy winner of that, and in the end he crumbled under the pressure. As you mentioned, this is Matchball. Infi versus Yumiko as a grand final tomorrow. We're about to witness. Secret Valley is the map in the upper right in teal. We see the former world champion, two-time world champion, actually. It is Infi, the Emperor of China. Not very beloved in the scene, but his success... Uh, speaks for himself in the bottom left loved by Koreans loved by Europeans I don't know how it is in China but I guess since he beat TH and Infi he will be beloved there as well it is Law Liot starting in the bottom left in the yellow trunks so engine of war creep obviously here at the null overseer with the two uh, poison creeps Infi will most likely go for the expansion again it would be a huge surprise if he's going for a rifle push here, we never see that. He's deciding for an Archmage on the other side, Demon Hunter. It's kind of easy to cast Infi games because you always know what's about to happen. You will always know that he will prefer the Expo and you will always also know the timings of that Expo. He will start with the Orange Camp and then will fall back into that natural expansion creep spot. Maybe after the Green Camp to get that level 2 for his Archmage, but there's nothing fancy coming out of him, nothing new, nothing crazy, especially not in this human against Night Elf matchup. But yeah, we have seen him perform really strong against Night Elf, and this is a matchup that a lot of human players struggle. And as it seems, he got a lot of answers to all the questions yeah. that Night Elf players put up your sleeve or that they cause trouble for you as a human player. And if he figured it out, knows what to do in all the different departments here, knows how to handle against the Warden, he knows what to do against the Demon Hunter Huntresses. Of course, sometimes also he loses, as we have seen it, against the Huntress pressure on Last Refuge. But on Amazonia, a perfect example, example of how to play it 
uh, to an edge and killing everything. Okay, Demon Hunter is out. First kill on the map. Of course, on the other side, Archmage is creeping with Militia at the same spot. They take a lot of damage thanks to the poison. But it will be alright and everything will stay alive. The Wisp is coming. Detonate might be a little late. Uh, okay, he gets it nevertheless. And the experience towards the Archmage here. Claws of Attack once again for him. On the other side, we see a Claws of Attack as well. And that's the exact opening we saw on... What was it? Um... Ancient Isles? I don't know. Um, and yeah. I think so. Uh, and now we have the Huntress Hall, but no second Engine of War. So it is Huntress pressure again, but not a full commitment. Your prediction yeah. was absolutely correct. Not committing. I, of course, the Huntresses will be great bouncing glaive against the working. Against the repairing workers. And dude, I started this cast with you will always know what Infi does. And dude, my life is miserable right now. He's taking to tier 2 and he's not going for any kind of crazy expansion play. The cast a curse hits even the vice world champion. This is this is so unusual. But yeah, maybe he thought, okay, this is important now. It's time to spice things up. Moonwell's getting drained by attacking the wisps here. At the moment, La Light is not there to stop this pressure. And I think he did not expect this at all. I think his game plan, La Light's game plan, is, a, is is falling apart at least to a degree here. Yeah, he's, he was delaying his tech because he went for that Huntress Hall and now he's being punished for that because the human player will have a fast attack than him. Is he losing one of the Wisps? Yes, he is. He's busy all over the place, keeping everything alive, sending out... Uh, sending out Wisp into all directions to figure out what's up here. Why is he not expanding? What's wrong with you? He loses another Wisp at the fountain on the top. And the third Wisp is being attacked in the main base as well as the fourth one by uh, the other squad of footmen. So uh, a lot of pressure coming out of Infi here. Tries to keep the Wisp count low to actually reduce the amount of lumber that will be there at tier 2 for the Knight of Player. And he did a good job of that. And he finds another Wisp there. One of the Wisps can escape. But three Wisp in total died already. And yeah, it seems like Lolite caught, uh, got a caught off guard here a little bit, as you said it. And Look at the Moonwills, man. He used so much. The one is empty. The second one is almost empty. And the, okay, the third one is looking healthy. But just by attacking Wisps with Footmen, draining so much heal and the healing of the Moon Juice is so important for the Night Elf to get, uh, yeah, to be able to pressure a lot with a demon hunter because you know okay i'm going home i'm healing up i'm pressuring you again this might not be possible with the amount of moon juice that he has now yeah also the wisp have to move around quite a lot and this is also denying like mining so to say because he cannot get more lumber in that time boots of speed finally for the demon hunter as well as for the archmage and speaking of items plus 12 damage for the Archmage, which will be a great deal because you can give, give these items to the Naga and then this Naga hits you so hard with the Frost Arrows. We're gonna have a little bit of a fast attack. He gives that boots of speed to the Naga and immediately wants to be aggressive again, sends one footman to his main base to keep that one safe. Is also distracting the army to the other side. One rifleman is already stuck in the main base of Infi. So he's, he's really committing to that super old school uh, strategy that his senpai master used back in the day the sky push so to say and yeah he, there were former teammates and he should pretty much know that straight inside out indeed what can law light do against this the first detonate is most likely coming in to burn the mana of both no it's just for a repair and so we will see another water mental he might have uh, he should have sacrificed one i guess he's losing one now no detonate on that so he doesn't save it infi is playing marvelous here on secret valley getting the push another archer dead the Naga has to be slightly careful Mo uh, shadow melt being used now demon hunter and the counter naga is coming and both heroes for Infi are kind of low. There is a town portal, obviously. Uh, can he ca can he catch him here? Looks he like will it's... probably catch one of the heroes. Probably the Archmage here. Yes, tries to force. Oh no, he's not even forcing the town portal. Indeed, he still is forcing the town portal. Can he kill the warden? No, he blocks <laughs> with the footman, and she stays alive, barely, but is still alive with what? 25. Yeah. HP. I would kill her and just revive her yeah. in the upside. There is a problem now. He has no shop, no regen 
for uh, the hit points, no regeneration for the mana. Of course he can go to the fountain, but Lalite expects him there. There is a wisp scouting uh, the movement of him. And now Infi has problems. He's not known, he's not uh, used to the rifle push. His rifleman was stuck in his main base, he didn't bring it to the party. And now it's on Lalite's end to do some damage here. Three Huntress, always great. Maybe he can buy some time, but of course he has to fight two riflemen now. They're with, without any upgrades, by the way, so he's not going for that usual 0-1. Huntress is chasing the Naga away, also the Archmage is catching up trouble. The, the militia the is coming, coming on the Naga of Laliot. The Sorcerer is slowing the Naga down in the perfect timing, drops the item down to the ground so that the Boots of Speed are still in the game. How cute is that, like giving your Boots of Speed while you die to the first hero so that he can run away a little faster. And this Sorcerer was so on time. And also a bold statement from you that he might be not familiar with that strat. Of course he's not playing that all so often, but he's still like a top-notch player, so... I don't think that he messes up the strat. Okay, level 3 on the Archmage. And level one and a half, what is this here? Pendant of Energy, what a uh, lucky Infi is. Uh, how lucky Infi is. Now three Riflemen, Naga level two, uh, Fork Lightning, so good against the Huntress. And he's still waiting for his Naga. There she is, Ancient Protectors in his base. He has double Ancient of Lore with Dryads. Dispel, so super important. Now that slow is into play. Yeah, and in the meantime, you can see Lolaid is super scared. He's not taking to tier 3. Usually you want to see like Knight of Players go up to tier 3 super fast to get the bears out against the rifle push. But this is not initially a rifleman push that is about to hit you at a certain point. But we're going to have that Ancient Protector and he's spending so much on playing it safe because he, he was assuming that there's a push coming soon to his base. And now he finds himself in a weird spot with a bunch of Huntresses, a bunch of Dryads coming to the party and he will be tier 2 for a long time. Infi is expanding, and I guess um, a player's sports I I Infi tricked and outplayed Lalaya twice here now. Right at the start when he expected an okay. expansion for him, and right now when he expected a push. Infi, what a kind of shenanigans he's playing here. But his base is open. There's no tower in his main base. Huge opportunity for Lolai to do some damage. No defense, he has to run back. His plans are kind of cancelled. He's pushing a bit with a giant and with an entry protector towards the expansion, but now he has to keep his heroes and the hunters safe. Yeah, that is beautiful. Using the exploit there, just realizing that there's nothing that can keep the workers safe and that their main base is open while he's also harassing the expansion with a few drives and creating another threat there with that ancient protector that you mentioned. So he's creating multiple threats at the same time that Infi has to deal with. And since he cannot really split his forces up, we have Dryads against the, the, uh, against the Archmage alone. And now the Arnaga with the Rifleman is forcing Lolayet back into his main base. But speaking of the Naga, already a level 3 Naga here for the Chinese human yeah. player. This is some crazy fast leveling on the second hero. That is a lot of damage that he will uh, put out. The right clicks plus the frost arrow and on top of things of course fork lightning. And he doesn't even swap the two claws of attack. I don't really know why because usually they are a lot better on the Naga than they are on, uh, on the Archmage. Maybe he's doing it now. <clears throat> But no, stepping in with the Archmage, uh, uniting the army, and once again, multiple threats towards Infi. But the uh, the harassment with Dryads against building, of course, not that great. Here we see the Ancient Protector eating through the forest and now attacking the base. Of course, the Arcane Tower is not doing anything against this. So a little distraction for Infi and some time for Lalayet to tech to tier 3. Yeah, the engine of war in the in the expansion right now is uh, forcing him back again, creating some space so that he can creep. But in the meantime, it's not really successful and it's not really doing all that much. Of course, it's also not a huge commitment. It's on, only like 135 gold and 60 wood or something like this. And we're going to have bears coming out, but no expansion plans for the South Korean Knight. If his tournament life is on the line, he's about to drop out if he loses that game. We're gonna have a Human Mirror Final tomorrow. If he wins that one, we're gonna go into the very last map of today, of this best of seven. And it's been a fun ride, but is Lolite able to get back? Is Lolite able to get back into that game? I'm not so sure. Demon Hunters tries to get into the main base again. It's still open. There's only one Arcane Tower that is being constructed. A few remaining workers. And he wants to create this multiple 
threats again. Wants to go and dive into the expansion while he's creating a threat in the main base. Can you really pull that one off? The Akma just running around the map and is having the time of his life while the Naga is creeping. Kind of odd to see that. Yeah. But yeah, the Naga almost level 4. The item is on the ground. It is maybe, I don't know what it is. Oh, he can just Maggie. pick it up if he sees yeah, it. Yeah, but he doesn't see it. It's night and now... Like mantle of ma this... Uh, ah, yeah, the of belt. strength. All right. Demon Hunter is stepping out, by the way. No more casualties here. Archmage is uh, yeah, still running around doing basically nothing, but Infi has the complete map control. There's nothing that Lolliot can do. 46 food. Of course, he can uh, poke the expansion a bit here, but it's not going to be enough. Infi is uniting his forces once again, trying to go for the red spot. Oh, no. He wants to sandwich the Knight Elf. There is a town portal on the Naga. What's the Demon Hunter doing, by the way? He's idling in the main base. Well, the cast is completely out of position, but uses that invis so nice to keep the one priest alive. Stride gets stepped out, so there's no chance of catching anything here. He can easily dispel the slow on the Naga, and he was not able to kill the priest. So he's really, really fast by using that invis. Now uses invis on one of the footmen, so he basically creates a shade for himself and now scouts the entire base and everything on the map. We're going to have bears coming out, two of them. In total, 49 supply against the 64. It's still a Rifleman caster. This can be killed. We don't have any scrolls yet for the human player. But on the other hand, 10 to 15 supply advantage is usually doing the trick for the human. It will be a tough call to make. But we have seen Infi throw games away on Echoids, for example. It was so close in the end and he had just such a huge lead. If you take one bad fight as a human player and if you commit to that or overcommit, it can be the end of the game. Indeed. Usually we see the critical mass of bears at like 3 to 4, but this is beautiful! Ancient Django of Endurance for Infi. It increased attack speed is amazing for uh, the Rifleman, and the uh, plus movement speed is also great because they will be slow against the bears and you can try to kite them. On the other side we see the Belt of Giant Strength for the Demon Hunter, 925 HP now, combined with uh, the Gauntlets of Ogre Strength. But of course, usually he wants damage and not sustainability. He's going for the red spot now for himself. The Naga needs level 3 before the next fight. Infi only now going for the first heal scroll in his inventory. But there is another Wend of Mana stealing. Can he get the big Ogre Lord before Inf uh, Infi comes in? Yes, he does. It is. Ah, Mask of, uh, what is it? Helm of Valor it is. Yep, he steals the next creep there with the Fork Lightning from the... From the Naga and one of the Dryads will definitely pay the price here for that creep jack. And isn't another one fallen? Nope, it's not. But a few units remain here, a few creeps. Level 4 for the Naga. Endurance Aura, of course, so nice for this very immobile army that Rifleman and the castle, they clump up sometimes. But in, we also do only have one breaker, a second one idling in the main base, a third one coming. Second attack upgrade started to be researched there for the Rifleman. And yeah, Loliat has to take the fight of his life to keep his tournament hopes here alive. He has. But I don't know. Yeah. I really don't know. The items on the Demon Hunter seem to be good. I mean, it's plus 13 strength. It's so much HP, but there is no Mountain King uh, to, to go for the focus. Of course, there's a Naga, but it's not um, that Infi is going for the hero focus. I think he will focus on the units here. I guess it's too much health that he has. Um, the helm is of course a little more agility as well, so he keeps that one, but the Belt of Giant Strength could be put to better use, I guess, if you sell them. Infi now, double heal scroll, most likely, oh yeah, the protection scroll again, and that did so well on uh, one map that we saw before. Lalite is splitting his Dryads again, and this is something very signature for him as well. To always harass with them, put them to good use, maybe sacrificing them to get some information. And that's what he does. Distracting Infi, but he is up at 76 food. He has nice items on the other side. 68 for Law Lyot. Zero upgrades, zero items. Wow, it's so nice. He sees that the dryads are on the map and active, and this is forcing uh, Lolite in a really, really bad spot because he will not have Dispel in the fight with the bears and Lolite is so trapped. He cannot really unite his forces at this point. The Dryads are on the other side of the map and hopefully I will not drop out here. Yeah, because I'm, I'm like, I I'm got crazy. huge lags here as well. Yeah, me too. And yeah, fight is about to break out. We're going to have Blizzard as well. But I like. 
Oh yeah, there we see it, and Thrall Protection being used, Blizzard is of course the nice answer towards the bears, they are all clumped up, and there is no disable against this Archmage, he needs to burn the mana as fast as possible, of course Brilliance are level 2, is doing wonders for him, the bears are falling left, right and center, he's going for the right place on the Archmage, does it work, he has a Town Portal, Fork Lightning is coming in as well, but he saves himself, not necessary to pull the, ex uh, to pull the escape button, Heal Scroll being used, Archmage back to orange HP range, he's going for the Naga now, he needs a hero kill to keep his turn and dreams alive otherwise he's out level five for the naga and town portal out 78 food for infi only 42 for law lions yeah he killed like five bears and two dryads this game is about to end and we even have like two towers set up for a second expansion he was only town portaling out to keep the naga alive at some point he could have also used the invis because i see a lot of men on all of these sorcerers but he was not willing to risk that one so we don't have any more heal scores but we still have 80 supply against the 46 supply of the night elf and yeah the blizzard is doing the trick the level 5 naga it is right now with the level 3 fork lightning plus 14 damage and yeah infi just stepping his game up by changing his creeping patterns changing his kind of style and yeah, it's it's the same plan that I had in my mind when I was announcing this game earlier. It's like, you always know what he's trying to do. And at this point, he just stepped his game up and went completely opposite directions. Went for tier 2, then you said it as well. Uh, he kind of created the threat of that rifle push coming to the main base. Relied playing it overly safe. And now has to pay for that because Infi was not ever going to push. He was setting up an expansion because he likes that one way too much. But it's a tier 2 expansion on the back of that Rifleman push. Last turn portal coming in. Probably the last fight of today. Oh, let's see. Lolite is retreating. He wants to buy more time. He wants to get everything out of this gold mine, I guess. And then go for one final push. But on the other side, Infi is setting up another expansion. Slow is working great against the bears. The Naga in his perfect position now okay spikes again but he will get those bear the spare nice little staff but look it's a two level difference on the naga here and that tells you a lot i mean the archmage is level four and a half as well the demon hunter is only very very close to level four infi killed a lot more infi crap better and now he's knocking at the door to victory how what can we see here one heal scroll one invo potion he's aware of the fact that la Liot might be going for the hero focus again. Blizzard is creating some space. That space he uses to do some damage. Demon Hunter is diving in. No level 4. As we mentioned here, Fog Lightning and Blizzard is working so well together. Nice synergy. Demon Hunter is being focused, but so is the Archmage. Invo Potion on both heroes being used. Yeah, and you can really see how he's like positioning his heroes in a really, really good spot. The Naga is focused. Invis is used again. Invis on both of the heroes. Absolutely no chance. Even though that there's dust, he can probably force another Town Portal. But look! What's left for the Knight of Flare? Look what is left for Lolite. We have 30 supply and three gold mines at this point. Mining for Infi. GG, it's called. It's over. We're gonna have our human mirror tomorrow. It will be Infi against Yumiko. But shout outs to Lolite for performing that well in the end and also taking the third place of the King of the Kings. Wow, Lolite, kind of the curse of the bronze medal. He got the bronze medal at WCA now in the NWL once again. Infi got his revenge. He was uh, kind of mad after he got killed by La Liot in the WCA. But now he found the answers. It was an amazing play on at least three maps by Infi. The first two were marvelous. And seeing him adapt finally in this last map on Secret Valley... Uh, was a surprise to me, but it was the right thing to do. I called him stubborn before. I will not do this again. I think he knew exactly what he did. Um, you mentioned it in the cast as well. Tricking him twice into a wrong um, strategy, into wrong tactics, into wrong decisions. And then playing, just playing good. I mean, the positioning of his heroes was great. I, did, did he lose one single rifleman? I'm not so sure because there was always blocking so. something. The bears didn't do anything to La Light. Of course, he was completely out leveled as well. Shop control. Uh, he has the resources to go for the heal scrolls, to go for the invo potions, and that won him everything. Definitely the deserved winner of this is Infi, and he's back on top. Yeah, what a game. 
what a nice game there from Infi. And this is really something that you have to break for yourself, this curse of being like second, the curse of being like third. Because sometimes you need to achieve this one time success. If you are if you are the champion once, it's kinda like you break that kind of curse and for some for some time you will just strive on that. And you will just like win tournament after tournament. We've seen that a couple of times in the history of like several sports, several esports titles as well. If you get to that spot, being number one, you will be there for at least some time. Probably take like one or two big tournaments and then another one is coming and kicking you from that throne. Speaking of kicking people from the throne, definitely make sure to be there next Wednesday when Neo is joining me again for the King of the Hill. We have our reigning champion Foggy waiting there. But first of all, we're going to focus on tomorrow exactly. with the grand final of the NWL, King of Kings, the human Nero. Probably the best two human players we have right now in the world. And this will be amazing to see. Indeed. We saw amazing human mirrors of Yumiko versus TH in the WCA qualifier group stage. But I think Infi will definitely be one level above what TH played. And Yumiko... There's an epic rivalry going on between Yumiko and the Brotherhood of TH and Infi. So it's not only about the gold medal, it's not only about yeah. prize money, but there is pride on the line, there is honor on the line. And uh, that spices things up a bit. I'm super excited about this human mirror. You might think, oh, it's going to be so boring, break wars all over, but I guarantee that we will see different tactics here from both players. So tomorrow, Friday... 13 CEST, right here at this very channel, back to Warcraft. Neo is going to be there, Yoth is going to be there. Maybe Remo will join us as well to have a nice little uh, triple cast here. Once again, as we had for the WCA APEC qualifier. It's been a joyride with you once again, Yoth. So if you want to plug anything, feel free to do so. Yeah, there's really not that much. If you just want to follow me on Jiggity Joss and keep up with some Warcraft play and stuff like that, definitely make that one. And beside that, I mentioned it already, the, the King of the Hill is a system or a tournament format that I just installed and seems to be a very cool one that a lot of people enjoy and get a lot of joy from. So just make sure to do that and probably this is it from me. Thank you very much for having me again. It was a pleasure. Going to head into tomorrow's Best of Seven and uh, we'll definitely pick up a few replays before we head into that one to be familiar with both of the play styles. And yeah, can't wait. All right. If you like what you witnessed today, feel free to follow us here at Twitch. If you missed some games, um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash back to Warcraft. Uh, we will put every single game up there in the playlist of the NWL. If you want to keep yourself up to date with all the news regarding back to Warcraft, with the news regarding the Warcraft scene in general, feel free to follow our Facebook and Twitter. It's both slash back to Warcraft or at back to Warcraft at Twitter. Um, Join the Reddit uh, society, reddit.com slash uh, r slash wc3. Apart from that, play on W3 Arena. If you have some bucks left over, uh, feel free to tip us at PayPal. It's back to warcraft at gmail.com. You can find all the important information right underneath the stream. Everything is up there. And yeah, thanks for watching. We will be back tomorrow, 13 CEST. Adios.